Hi, this is Eva for Once Upon a Timeline. Welcome, everybody. Looks like I am live. Let me see who's in. Rune Wolf 77 PG2424, No No, Frankie Aponte, Chloe, Michael Fontaine, some new people in here. Kiel Cook Monty, Heart's Truth, Kai Lucas Zachary, Art Generica, Shari D, welcome. Illuminate Date. D8, D1, Illuminate D1, Moonlit Illusion, Janice Windsor, Ban Banis Ray, Transcend 1111. Hmm, yeah, lots of new people. JoJo's, Consciousness of Steel. I wish I had that. Dark Wolf's Den, hey, how are you doing? Shari D is so bored that she's starting to learn how to make sourdough starter. Yeah, the problem with that is you have to keep it alive like forever. Well, I guess you could let it die, but first munch, Matt Myers. All right, I think that covers it. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, people are asking about that orangutan. Yeah, it, it's a real one, but it uh, looks like the species is split into three. That did not used to be the case for me, and none of the three look like I remember. But I'm going to, as usual, I'm going to start with world news. Uh, there's plenty of weird going on still, and then I will skip over after I'm done yakking about that. We'll go to the regular Mandela stuff. Um, lots of, well, I don't have a ton of Mandelas, but a lot of them are really weird, interesting kind of things uh, this time. Okay, so talking about wacky world news. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw this one, and I have mentioned before that the sea... Um, the C19 is um, being blamed for like every illness under the sun and every illness under the sun just about is um, being said to be a symptom of it. So pretty much if you have, you know, an itchy toe, now you might have the C according to media. So here's an example though. I couldn't have even thought of this one. <laughs> it's been not super mainstream news, but yet not really debunked and there is video of it. Supposedly, these two Chinese doctors who got the C uh, from treating uh, C victims and this guy turned, like, black. <laughs> okay? They're not dead or anything. They just, their skin turned black. So supposedly, this guy is this guy, and this guy is this guy. Okay. So I thought it was like a bad Photoshop do job, but there's actually video of them. Uh, I'm not going to play too much. Let me see if I can get to it. Yeah, it so supposedly that's them. And uh, they turned... Dun, dun, dun. See if I can get a better image there. Why not? It doesn't look good. Yeah, so there they are. They've turned... <laughs> I mean, you can do that kind of thing with video editing software. To my knowledge, it's totally doable. So just because it's a video doesn't mean it's real. Um, but <laughs> you can't tell anymore. I mean, real versus fake, I, I don't think you could really tell anymore. <laughs> Maybe there's no difference. But So these two Chinese doctors supposedly turned, their skin turned very, very dark. They're blaming it on uh, COVID, the C causing, um, uh, what was it, liver damage. Now, I thought that was pretty weird because, I mean, I've definitely heard of jaundice, uh, like you turn yellowish and usually it's mostly in the eyes at least in my old timeline uh from liver damage i've never heard of you turning black so the weird thing here is i'm like i don't know if they're trying to scare asians with this particular storyline but the weird thing here is they're calling this a dark yellow <laughs> like it really because everybody knows well a lot of people know that jaundice is yellow and liver problems cause jaundice and so then Somehow this has been called a dark yellow, and I'm like, uh, what color is dark yellow? I, I, I don't think there is such a thing as dark yellow. I mean, you could get to green, you could get to orange, but then it's orange and green. It's not yellow. It sure as hell is not, like, dark brown. Um, <laughs> it's no such thing as dark yellow. But anyway, this article says that uh, this is jaundice and that they're dark yellow and that later they lightened up, although this guy does not look totally like Chinese colored in this video part either. Uh, so anyway, this is just really weird. <laughs> I don't like. And it's two doctors, okay? So um, 
I don't know. It's like, shouldn't there be like, like either only one guy or, or one guy and somebody from the public or if there were two dollar doctors working together, why did they both turn black? I don't know. The whole thing is just weird. So uh, there's another thing that, that another symptom of the C is um, you can turn black. <laughs> dark yellow. You can turn dark yellow. Dark yellow. Watch out for dark yellow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah see no they're saying that they were normal color to start with and then they turned dark yellow and that is dark yellow this is supposed to be dark yellow and that is not dark yellow sorry um <laughs> dark yellow is gold yeah okay i'll give you that um <laughs> so i just looked up jaundice i think i've done this before just to see what jaundice looks like uh in this timeline just to make sure that like black people uh, you don't turn into a black person if you get jaundice. And so I did a quick Google on jaundice. Um, I have to say this is a lot yellower than I ever remember jaundice being. I, I remember it mostly being in the eyes, like like this one here. Um, and then the skin, maybe just a subtle tinge of yellow. Uh, I don't remember turning into like the clown yellow. Like some of these images are like, I mean, if you if you saw that guy, in a, in a shade in a dark alley you'd you'd be scared you, know? you wouldn't see oh that poor guy has liver damage you'd be like i'm getting out of here so uh th this is definitely more yellow at least some of these images see like some of these i wonder if that's just a they uh did a camera filter and like change the or like change the um the uh coloration on the on the photo but um this is more like kind of how i remember just like this. So anyways, though, but even in this timeline, jaundice is not like African American. It's uh, yellow. And this dark yellow is still yellow, yellow. So I don't know how this becomes dark yellow. It doesn't. All right. So just another example about how everything is the sea and the sea is everything. Um, I think I covered last time about a lot of the new symptoms that they're describing that they're blaming on C also just happen to be symptoms of things that happen anytime you go on one of those heavy duty ventilators, you know, confusion, um, depression and other um, um, difficulties, uh, neurological issues. Uh, those things all happen when you've been sedated um, and put in a coma for weeks and on a ventilator. It happens C or no C. So now they're saying C causes all those. I'm like, wait, but those are all people on a ventilator and ventilators cause all those. So how do you know it's the C and not the ventilator? When, when the ventilator is known to cause those and the C is not, why are they saying it's the C? So again, just weird, weird rationales. Um, all right, so here's another one. Uh, so now, just started about yesterday. I heard a little bit of rumor, but they've really kicked it in yesterday. Um, C causes heart attacks, dum, dum, dum. Now the weird thing is, again, you look on Google, there's a, if you type in like the C plus heart attacks on a Google, about half the articles say that uh, a new, um, it's, it's newly been figured out that people that have heart problems are more likely to get the C, right? And then the other half of the articles are like, the C has been found to cause, cause heart problems. Uh, now, so autopsy of the first known C, C death in the U.S. reveals odd cause of death, a ruptured heart. Some of the articles are just hamming this up, like your heart like explodes and blood fills your chest cavity and you're immediately doomed and dum dum dum. Just so happens that the first known um, case in the U.S.A. just happened to have this ruptured heart. You know, it, they've just got to one-up it. They can't just say, oh, one, a person was found. No, it has to be the first reported C case. And uh, also, there are starting to mumble about mm, the C being in the U.S. like maybe in, or as early as February. No surprise, we've already discussed that. Uh, there was plenty of evidence, at least the evidence that they're circulating. Who can really trust anything at this point? But so... Now your heart might explode, or if you have heart problems, you might get the C. It's basically just so weird. I mean, like, 
And of course, the CDC never officially counted any of these cases, uh, any of these symptoms. So they have like this plausible deniability, at least for now. I've also seen a ton more articles about those, the COVID toes, the C toes, which was just so whacked out last week. I thought maybe that one would die, but no, they, they keep barfing up that one that the C causes um, symptoms of frostbite. So, um, what else? Dun, dun, dun. Let's see. Just check out Dr. Butar. I haven't watched, you know, what's weird. And I heard this on another channel, um, that they really brought this up. That's really weird for me in current timeline is that some kind of an idea shows up on, on the internet, like on YouTube, immediately spreads over like the whole internet and in, in like two days it's some theory i've never heard of before uh for a good example is the the thing where um viruses don't cause illness like there's no such thing like there's no such thing as viral illness or viruses don't really exist and it's really just um something else and i mean that's totally different than everything i ever learned um I don't know if it's true in this timeline or not, uh, but it's just weird. There's not really a lot of evidence for that theory, uh, yet, like, everybody's uncle just pounced on that theory and is now like, this is how it is. Um, so I find that really weird, and it's like every, it's like theories and ponderings and opinions are now absolutely, like, promulgated as complete fact by everybody this is how it is. is how, I mean a lot of these theories are interesting there might be some evidence for some of them but I mean I I would never just go this is how it is but that's like like 99% of the videos out there are like this is how it is I don't know how it is uh, maybe it'll be 10 different ways and 10 different timelines but um that's something really weird about this timeline it, it's not like oh there's this neat theory it's just this is how it is so that's why um some of the doctors i mean they all have a different opinion on on it there was the two doctors i, I didn't play that one you might have seen the two doctors came out and they said uh two studies have shown that the um that oh, i think they did the third study their personal study of the antibodies in general population found that the death rate of the C must be pretty low because all these people apparently already had it and uh, they weren't sick. Okay, so that was like the third study now that all three of the studies have come in saying that um, that apparently the C has spread really quite far in the population and not that many people have gotten sick. So what do we see in the media now? Um, since, first of all, YouTube banned the two doctors after it spread far and wide, which I think is very interesting. It's almost like, um, and then uh, I think Fox News complained that the two doctors' videos was deleted from YouTube. So why wait until it got ridiculously popular and linked from 10 million places and mirrored from 10 million places and then delete the original and then have it on Fox. It's almost like, uh, you know, the timeline wants people to see that something fishy is going on. That's my feeling on it. Because I don't feel like if somebody was really, really trying to stamp this out, they would wait until there's a bajillion copies of that uh, particular show before they uh, deleted one original. Okay, so again, another example of people having a, an opportunity to wake up. Okay, so um, let's see. I'm, I'm like kind of okay. So, anyways, yes, the doctors, uh, they were interesting because the two doctors, uh, they were saying, okay, death rate isn't that high, so we should open up the country. But then, right at the end, they go, and we, of course, it goes without question that we need way more testing and um, way more. I don't think they specifically said vaccine, but they said way more testing which makes no sense because if there's really death rate is low and close to flu, then why would you have to test everybody and his uncle in order to open up the country again? You don't do that for any other flu. I mean, it would make sense to maybe do some testing in certain areas to get a better understanding of, of the um, situation and how it operates, but you wouldn't need to test every city and every state extensively just in order to open up if it was just flu-like death rate 
So these doctors, you know, they get everybody all, yeah, yeah, open up. That's not a big deal. And then they, they spin that right on the end. And I'm like, that's completely illogical. Like everything in this timeline is illogical. You know, um, Chinese people turning into black people, calling it dark yellow is illogical. Even the debunkers who are saying open the country, most of them are illogical. Uh, most of the theories that are being promoted as fact don't have much evidence. Therefore, promoting it as fact is not logical. The fact that everybody is believing these without question is not logical. So I don't know. This timeline is hurting my brain. All right. So we've got the ruptured heart. So um, heart attacks cause the C and the C causes heart attacks. Which one is it? You can't have both. That's not logical. Oh, let's see. What else have I not? What have I? <laughs> Before I get into this RNA vaccine, okay. I'm sure that a lot of you have heard that they are talking about using Tom Hanks blood to make a C19 vaccine. Okay, Tom Hanks's blood. Okay. Uh, can it be any coincidence that he of all people has been chosen? Because apparently he's like this super hated guy among the deep state uh, reptilian pedophile takeover theory area. Um, he's supposed to be one of like the top evil ones. And then for the Mandela, he's like the top weird Mandela. He's in the middle of all the Mandelas. So now really i mean is this another jump the shark is this another crazy crazy coincidence he just happens to be one of the people not only was he one of the first people to get the c as far as famous people and now he's gonna have his antibodies in a vaccine okay so when i first heard that i'm like well how how can his blood be in a vaccine because i thought i knew what a vaccine was but I don't know. I, apparently, I did not know what a vaccine was in this timeline. It's cook strange world. Remodeling at my house. Sometimes I have to get to bed early for my workers. I was in the seventh grade. I was in the seventh grade. I had a model car. I asked everyone to guess what color it was. It looked black, but it was yellow. Okay, well, maybe in this timeline, but I have never mistaken black for yellow. I mean, not with normal lighting and normal color background, certainly. My Google is showing me every day 549 new cases and nine dead as a new info. Every day, the same numbers. And every day, there's more new cases, and it's, there's more cases than there ever has been. Dun, dun, dun. You know, I really should show the local example. There was a couple of examples I was going to dig up. Let me see if I can find this one. This, you know, I have been so busy that I really have not been able to prepare nearly as much as I wish I could for some of these shows because uh, there's a lot of really interesting stuff that I need to be preparing for. Let me see if I can find that. Okay, I think it's here. No, that was uh, thur, thur, thur. not the black roses. There was something last week where somebody was going around attempting to convince me that uh, that the C deaths were spiral spiraling. And they sent me this article as proof with this data because I wanted to see, um, here it is. Dur, dur, dur. Okay, it was this guy, E39 Dynon. All right. So here, I believe it was this one that was totally ridiculous. There's two of them. So um, this is the article. And here is the chart that's on it. Deaths in New York City, above or below normal. So he gets this chart. Okay. 
I wish it was a little easier to see. First of all, they're not really clear on what the deaths are. Uh, deaths of what? Um, usually when there's a, a chart like this, it's all cause. It says all cause deaths or deaths by this or death. It just says deaths, which is unusual for making a chart. Let me see if there's anything here. Notes. Counted deaths for the month ending in April 4 include an additional 1,396 corona deaths reported by the city that have not yet been added to the CDC data. All right, so they're adding 1,396 deaths. Source, New York Times analysis of provisional data from the National Center of Health Statistics, CDC. All right, um, this is what's weird because it's a New York Times analysis of, of provisional data. So it doesn't say how the analysis works. Okay, and it's still not clarifying what the deaths are, of, although we just know it's provisional data. All right, so first thing they do is they're calling it above and below normal. All right, so then it goes along 2000, 2008, blah, blah, blah. Um, September 2001, more deaths than expected, that many. Now, first of all, we don't know what the baseline is because they don't tell you. All you know is it's below or above normal by a certain amount. Um, so I guess here it's 2,000 above normal. It doesn't say how they decided normal. Um, we don't know because, like, normal could be, like, 10,000 and now there's 2,000 above. That's kind of a lot. Or it could be 25,000 and it's 2,000 above. It doesn't seem like that much above. Okay. But for every year here, there is, it's either up or down, except for once in a while, it's totally flatlined. Okay. Then we get over to here. I'm going to see if we can make that bigger. All right. Now here's what is weird because right here we have, why is it no data? We have no data for a big chunk. And I do not know how long that is because it's not really clear. Um, okay, so this is 2015. So this must be in the middle is about 2017 and a half. So this chunk here looks to me like maybe half a year or more. 16, 17, 18, 19. Oh, that's like a year. There's no data for a year right here. Yeah, each one of these ticks is a whole year. So for an entire year, there's no data. Okay, so what did, where did that data go? Did they put it all over here? Because now all of a sudden, 2020, it's this high. 5,330 more deaths than expected counted so far. But it, it really looks like they've taken this chunk of data here and clomped it onto there. Um, because if they have data for, two, for this spot, why do they not have any data for in here? It's very suspicious and that's a whole year's worth of data that they're not including why would they not include that um are they hiding something have they taken it because they called this an analysis analysis of provisional data so like i really want to know where the data is for this whole year um is there something in there that like maybe it was really high last year like this high and now it's this high this year um did they take the data out of there and stick it on this year um, I mean, that is just totally where, so he sent me this as convincing me that, you know, there's been a lot more deaths this year, but it doesn't, again, it doesn't say, uh, what goes into these deaths. You know, is this just C deaths? Is this pneumonia deaths? Is this suspicious deaths? Um, they kind of vaguely say it, um, but they don't really clarify. So that's one really weird one. I think there was another one. This is the fishiest one. But this one here was also a little fishy. See, again, where's there's a whole year missing again. So the dotted line is, um, what is the dotted line? Actually, it doesn't even say, does it? Oh, expected. Okay, those are the expected dates, the, the expected um, deaths in New York City. All right. Um, and then for an entire year, again, it looks like there's nothing. And then month ending in April 4, 9,780 deaths. Um, month ending April 4. What month ends in April 4? Um, I don't know. But again, there's nothing for a whole year and then this giant line. Doesn't say what the deaths are. 
Let's see what it says. Counted deaths for months in eight, ending April 4, including an additional 1,396 coronavirus deaths reported that have not yet been counted to the CDC data. So I'm wondering if is it that 1,300 something deaths from this section? So they've added it that haven't been counted. I don't know. It, the whole thing, again, it's an analysis of provisional data. So this has just got to be the weirdest chart. I have never, ever seen a graph or chart where they skip an entire year and then and then just have that. So, and again, the, this is, I'm trying to show you this because this is the kind of funny math that I'm seeing that is very suspicious. Uh, a lot of the math is just downright um, deceptive. So um, I, I can't even figure out what's going on with this one because they don't clarify what the deaths are. But um, I'm going to look for uh, another one that I see often. San Diego. This is the local count, if I can find it. Derp, derp. I want the San Diego count, guys. Local situation. San Diego actually has a better chart than a lot of them. Um, so this is the main page, and it'll, it'll say um, down here, number of hospitalizations, 761. Now, if you really search, um, you, can, you can find out that this does not include people who've left the hospital. So if you, you were in the hospital for, if you were hospitalized for one hour, uh, you're, uh, you're counted on here. And this is all of San Diego County. Um, it does not count people who leave. So you're in there for an hour and you leave. There's another, if somebody right now goes into the hospital and is hospitalized for two minutes and leaves, it'll be 762 because it doesn't matter if you leave or not. Uh, then they never subtract anything off of these. Uh, intensive care is the same thing. Anybody who has ever been in intensive care for the C, including people that are never tested but are just assumed to have it, are on here. So, so since the C was counting started, there have been 241 intensive care cases in, in San Diego. All right. Um, there's been 120 deaths. So one can assume that most of these deaths would be have first been in intensive care. So one thing I do is that I subtract the deaths from intensive care. I would assume that some of these people also left intensive care. I have no idea how many would have, but uh, so it comes to about 120 in intensive care, probably fewer because some people, one would imagine, recovered and left. Um, but it's been about 120 for uh, the intensive care number for like a week or two now. Hospitals go up, intensive cares goes up, uh, deaths go up. But if you subtract deaths from intensive care, it's been about 120. So that's why I will say um, that it's doesn't. It seems to be pretty flatlined over here. Um, all right. What do I like about? There's a chart that they make here. One of the reasons I like the San Diego chart better than almost every other chart is because it shows new cases versus um, like, first of all, they clear, they fairly cleared that this is a constant count. It, it never includes anybody who got better. So 3,432 cases in all of San Diego County, but they're not all concurrent. Obviously some of these people got better. All right. One thing neat is that they, they count how many are new cases. So, um, you can see that this yellow here, um, it kind of peaked a little bit over here and then there was less. So suddenly it's higher now. And this is a very interesting because you'll suddenly see all these articles. Oh my God, cases are spiking. And I, I just, I, I predicted this. Cases are spiking in San Diego County. They've reached an all time high. We have the most new cases ever. Yeah, and then like on a few of the articles buried on the very back end, I, I guess nobody reads 15 paragraphs to find out what says in the 15th paragraph you will find in a few of the articles that they actually increased testing right around this time when suddenly the cases spiked. So duh, of course they found more people because they are testing more people and before they were sending a bunch of fairly healthy people home and not testing them. So that's changed. So now this is the argument that cases have gone up so we can't end the lockdown because cases are spiking again. 
Uh, then when you read down on some of the articles, it'll say that the actual percentage of positive cases is down in the, in the tests, which is something that Trump originally said that if the percentages are going down, which they are, have, they've gone down a fair amount, um, that, you know, of all the people tested, fewer testing positive, but you don't see that hardly anywhere. I mean, 99% part of, percent of the articles are is cases are spiking. Ah, cases are spiking. So again, what I've been doing is looking at these numbers, uh, how many people are actually in intensive care and they're not spiking. So, um, I don't, and I mean, that's ignoring the fact that a lot of these cases are probably, um, just presumptive and never tested. Um, that ignores the fact that we don't know the accuracy of the test or, ha or what it's really testing for, or if previous flu vaccines can influence a test or not. Um, there's like a million things we don't know about the accuracy of this test, but even looking at their current numbers, you know, and knowing that they, um, are testing more, this means nothing. Uh, I, I just knew this was going to happen though. So it's happening all over. They're increasing testing. And then the minute they increase testing, oh my God, cases are spiking and they've reached an all time high. Ah. Okay. So now we've had three studies, antibody studying sh showing that the um, death rate is actually pretty darn low and close to flu. But what, what response have we had in the media is, oh my God, there's probably millions of deaths that that didn't get counted. I, they have no evidence for this. There is absolutely no evidence that there's millions of C deaths that didn't get counted as C. In fact, all the evidence suggests that anything that could possibly C, be C is counted as C. And a whole bunch of stuff that probably not even C are still counted as C. But the media now is pushing, uh, I think they're trying to push that those three studies that show a lo lo low death rate are probably wrong because they didn't get all the deaths. Um, and so that's the big push now that it's, it's not, you know, and then they demand that all the antibody tests aren't, aren't, uh, tested themselves enough. Of course, the, uh, the C test itself has never been tested, but that's okay. I don't know. So it's just, it's total insanity. I mean, it's total logic out the window. I don't know why Nobody is, I have not heard one newscaster um, or anybody talk about this. Well, of course, the cases are spiking because test, testing's gone up. I have not one heard, heard one doctor, not one anything, even discussing this issue. So um, I don't know. It's just weird. There should be people all over this. Like I said, I'm just some girl, some middle-aged girl in San Diego who's not even, doesn't even have a medical degree. And I can see this in, in like 10 minutes. There is just, there's got to be people smart enough to see this. So I just don't understand why it's not being said anywhere. It's, it's this timeline has just got me like my head spinning. Okay. Let's see. Where are we all at? This is my giant rant on the, the illogical nature of this timeline. It was yellow translucent over a black base, so it's yellow. Well, I mean, if you put yellow over black, isn't it black? Shari, are you talking about how the YouTube took the two doctors interview down? Yeah, see, I, I don't know. To me, it's just like waiting that long, then finally taking it down, and then... And then um, the fact that it got took down on mainstream media, um, but yet not all these other things obviously fishy about the sea, not on mainstream media. I don't know, the whole thing, it's almost like just another, I, I kind of feel like how much, like the media is whipping people around um, back and forth, back and forth. It's, it's opportunity for more people to wake up. I mean, like how much ridiculous baloney can you choke down before you start to finally go, wait a minute here? Um, people are giving a lot of, getting a lot of opportunities to notice. So Shari D, you know what you said, every day it's the same number of new cases. You know, how many times do people have to read that before they go, wait, 549 again? I mean, you 
watch these shows so you're watching but i mean like does anybody notice that isn't kind of suspicious already Uh, trying to find out where everybody in town went, woke up one day and everyone was gone. Well, you know, that they're supposed to all be in their house. But yeah, that is something that I think is weird. I mean, are, are people going to be leaving the timeline? And in their timeline, we're gone. And, and we're in our timeline, they're gone. And we all just think we're hiding in, each, in, in our houses. And that's why there's less people. I definitely noticed there's way less people on the roads. But everybody's supposed to be staying home, right? I mean, you could hide so much right now. Um, there's way less homeless people, but supposedly our governor put them all up in hotels. Are we just going to have less homeless people forever? I mean, if they lock us down for months and months, and then even when we get out, there's probably going to be a storyline that a lot of people are still hiding in their homes because it's safer and people go out less. And I mean, you would never know if like half the population was gone. I mean, the houses are still right there, but, but they're not because, you know, the cities in, are moving around and the roads. And, you know, I've said before that a lot of buildings are gone and um, surely a lot of businesses won't reopen and they'll blame it on the sea. So um, I don't know. I don't, I'm just wondering if that'll happen. I really don't know. Maybe everybody will come back out of the, out of the houses and it'll be like it used to be. I, I really don't know. But, you know, all this talk about the new normal you really, uh, you really got to wonder what we're going to see after this. And it's like we're really being programmed that it's not going to go back. Logic took a trip to the funny farm. Yes, exactly. And like everything. Why are we in the dark timeline? I don't know if we're in the dark timeline. Um... You know, a lot of this stuff on the media, I don't even know if it's happening. It, it seems like it's, there's, their, their footage is full of mannequins and it's probably fake footage. Um, there might not be any more deaths than there ever normally is. So it may, it may just be the baloney timeline. I mean, yeah, we have to stay home and um, for people who have income problems, that would really suck. It doesn't seem like I really know anybody who has it. I imagine that there are people with income problems, but I really just don't know at this point. You know, who's an NPC, who's not, who's real, who isn't. It's a cover for something biblical. How do we know that towns aren't empty? You know, I don't know. I mean, maybe we got harvested. I, I really just don't know. You know, maybe... I mean, there's so many things that could happen. I do feel like it's creepy, you know, and when I drive home, I drive home late and there's nobody around and it feels really empty. And I, I don't know if that's my imagination, my own paranoia, if I'm really picking up on something, um, you know, I don't know. Um, another thing I had brought up on, on Redcon is... Um, being home and not having my morning activities, which was usually sports, for which I had to wake up, then having the show and staying up late once a week, my schedule just keeps shifting so that I stay up later and later, and I get up later and later, and I become like this night owl, you know, I stay up almost all night, but what's weird is I've, I've, I've said this, and a, a fair number of people were agreeing with me on, on, the, on Redcon, was that I feel really crappy until the sun sets. And then when the sun sets, I've, I have way more energy. And I've really noticed that this last week. Like, I've just been really tired. I don't, I don't even really have any symptoms of illness, just tired, you know. And then the sun sets and I'm like, oh, I feel great. Um, I've been trying to fight it, going to bed earlier, uh, still stay up, end up sleeping late, um, hard to fall asleep earlier. It's like I've, I've switched to this creature that likes nighttime or like the sun is hard on me. You know, and I'll be in, in the house or in work and you, I don't have any direct windows at work. So I don't even know what the sun is until I look, go outside to look. And um, I'll feel better and then I'll check and that's the sun's just setting, you know. Um, and I didn't even consciously know. So it's, the sun is not even touching me, but yet I still feel the effects. So it's not just that I go outside and feel tired. Even when I'm in the house, it doesn't matter. It's the time of day. 
It's not really the rays because the rays weren't even touching me. At least not, you know, the visible light spectrum rays. So I don't know. They're just... It's just weird. I, I don't know if there's anything to that, but a lot of people on the other sub said that they were experiencing similar. No, new, no viruses are not new, normal. Viruses have always existed, killed a few hundred thousand, and life goes on unless we keep the young children home. Then we help the virus. You know, see, I just don't know in this timeline what will turn out to be real. I mean, it may not be all that stuff we learned uh, all our life that there was really good evidence for. I don't know if there, that evidence is going to stay here and that's going to be the reality here. I really don't know at this point. People need to go outside, blah, blah, blah. You know, they're not like, they're not coming after us with guns if we go outside. I, I go outside every day and I uh, walk around some. Without regular exercise, I, there's these really steep hills near work. And so I'm not totally degenerated so that I can go back to sports later. I totally agree with you. I have no energy till nightfall. I cannot sleep early. My mind feels so much more awake and clear once night comes. This is a very recent and disturbing schedule. Okay. YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth speed. Ah, uh, whatever. Okay. Yeah. See, I don't get it. Um, it used to be that I was kind of a night owl, but if I noticed I was staying up too late, I would just make a point of going to bed earlier and I would, and then I would wake up earlier. And, um, it's not really working like it used to, um, EMF radiation perhaps. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's gotta be something that is not in the visible, vis visible spectrum and can penetrate walls, uh, whatever it is. I don't, you know, I don't know. Cause the sun sets, it's, it's not that late, so people are still awake. So um, so I don't think it's like, you know, people being awake and, you know, the consciousness field or anything. So um, I don't know. It's weird. Um, maybe it's just, you know, maybe once, maybe that's why we have to be on. I don't know. I mean, it, one imagines it's related to the lockdown, um, at this point, I don't really feel super stressed by the sea. You know, I don't feel like I'm really stressed out as far as mentally. I mean, I was kind of scared at first, but then when I got more data, I was like, meh. Three people finally responding to my Emmy posts in the Emmy community now ignores them. Actually, I'm going to include one of yours later when we get to the Mandela's. My day ends when the sun comes up. Okay, well, Dark Wolf, you kind of have an excuse because that's your um, schedule at work, though. I mean, I've always been a night person, too, but now it's like I almost can't not be a nice per night person. Um, I, I used to be able to feel normal during the day, and it just seems like lately it's been very hard. Nighttime feels amazing to me. So much energy compared to the day. Yeah, see? Moonlit illusion. You know, you used to see me on here and I'd be like, because uh, it was the middle of the night. I'm not like that now. I'm like, no, I'm awake. Uh, I look forward to even more weirdness into the golden age. Um, Yeah, you know, I just, the main thing, I really don't mind staying up all night, but, you know, I want to um, still, like, hang out with people. And um, unless they all switch to night owls too, Plus, I have to go to work during the day to ha sometimes. I have, I really gots to. So then it's kind of a drag. Those masks are useful for viral transmission and long-term glove use basically becomes a fomite. Oh, I, I don't think I know what a fomite is. I've heard that word. Fomite. Now I have to look it up. What's a fomite? Object or pill likely to, ca oh, okay. Objects that carry infection. Dun, dun, dun. Well, apparently people are just um, getting their gloves and taking them off and throwing them on the ground all over the parking lots at the grocery stores, and then all the workers have to pick them up, which is, I guess it's not that gross, but it, mentally it's gross. So um, as far as the viral trans masks useless for viral transmission, uh, I know that that is part of the mantra that the CDC gave out the first month before they reversed it and said that uh, 
masks, they kind of reversed it and said masks are only good to help prevent transmission. Actually, if you actually look at the research um, and that video that I did do um, a while back that is not a live stream, um, there's plenty of research that suggests that um, homemade masks are fairly useful for preventing both transmission and getting it um, from others. It does block quite a few particles. Um, I think there's plenty, all the evidence suggests that it is helpful. It is not 100% certainly, but it is helpful to wear a mask. I don't know why the mantra is still spreading around social media and, and mainstream media that masks are useless uh, for preventing it yourself from getting that. That's really not at least it does not correspond with current research um, from like before January. Anything after January is like CDC mantras, uh, not really related to any actual research. But anything before January is, uh, seems to be based on actual research, um, and you would want to check those. Washing your hands, more, more effective for the long term. Well, you know, according to actual research, yes. I, you know, I can't really trust anything anymore because the reality keeps flipping around and even actual research changes. And it was this today and it's that tomorrow. Put the gloves in the garbage. Yeah, I know. Or, or like have a bag in your car uh, that's reserved for them and just plop them in, you know, and maybe cover it or something. It, it's Since when did people become disgusting pigs too? All right. Da, da, da. Okay, I covered that one. Okay, so Tom Hanks' blood. I kind of got way off on a, on a tangent. So um, they have this thing now, and this is an ME for me. I've never heard of this kind of vaccine. Well, I kind of heard of it, but... So when I first heard that they were going to use Tom Hanks' blood for a vaccine, I'm like, what? Because a vaccine everybody knows or at least i thought i did and i and up until a month ago is the only vaccine i've ever heard of um is that they take a little bit of the protein on the exterior of the virus and they inject it in you or sometimes they they inject the whole virus but it's either dead or weakened um, some part of the virus or the whole virus in dead or weakened form they inject that a little bit of it into you plus something that makes your immune system freak out usually some kind of poison, what they called it a juvent, but that's why they used to use mercury because you need something that's pretty damn poisonous. And they inject that in you. So you get a bit of the, the virus so that not strong enough to really reproduce supposedly and, and some poison, AKA a juvent. That is always how viruses always were. I mean, vaccines, that's how vaccines were. So I'm like, well, how are they going to use Tom Hanks's blood? Because um, his blood does not contain poisonous adjuvant, obviously, one would hope. And his blood does not contain the virus anymore. Plus, they would have to weaken it. Uh, so w I thought, well, maybe they're going to use his blood to test the vaccine. So no, I look it up. And it, I, in this timeline, I'm totally wrong. Um, they have this thing called, and they have all these things called vaccines now that I've never heard of. Um, passive immunization, um, passive immunotherapy. I don't know why they're calling it a vaccine because it's more like an immunotherapy, but I first heard of this as a completely um, investigational thing that they tried to do when Ebola was threatening to take over the world. And basically what they did was they took some antibodies out of somebody that had recovered from Ebola um, and back then, Ebola, only a few percent of people survived and almost everybody died. That's another ME because in this timeline, um, a, a pretty more than half people do survive Ebola in this timeline. So they would take some antibodies out of those few survivors and they would inject them into people who just got the disease. So it was immunotherapy. Basically, we're saying, let's give them some antibodies pre-programmed to attack it and, and maybe that'll give them a leg up and more time for their own immune system to kick in. All right, so it kind of sounded good, and they said they weren't sure because almost everybody died of Ebola anyway, and maybe a few more people survived, but they really couldn't tell because they didn't have a good controlled study. Uh, it seemed like it was helping. 
And that was it. That was all that uh, she wrote. I have never heard of anything else with this um, antibodies. And, and keep in mind that these are people who are already sick. And then they take the antibodies and they put you in, the, in, in you to try to kick the disease's butt that's already in you. Okay, so now, dun, 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 this is being called a vaccine. And even though you've never had the disease, they take these antibodies and they stick them in you. So this, they really could use antibodies from Tom Hanks now. They could suck them out of his blood. I don't know if they clone them or what, but they could take his antibodies and stick it in you, and then they call it a vaccine. And it's not supposed to last really long, but basically they're saying now that those those antibodies will sit in you, and, and if the C comes, it, they would kick the C's butt. Um, I've never, absolutely never heard of... Um, putting antibodies in you early before you're even sick or it becoming a vaccine, being called a vaccine. Um, we've, I've discussed before that um, there's a lot more stuff that passes to the infant from the mother here in, uh, in this timeline, including um, a lot of weird stuff about DNA being transferred to the mother and all this stuff. So they're, they're talking about some of that here. There's two kinds. Um, you can get passive immunity from your mother if you are a baby, or you can get it artificially by this vaccine from Tom Hanks, apparently. The weird thing is the history of it, it goes back now to 1890. Now, I swear when they were doing it with, um, with the uh, Ebola, it was new at that time. They were It was totally experimental. But over in this timeline, they're saying... Uh, that they had some successful some successful use with it on uh, diphtheria and tetanus and a bunch of the old diseases. I have never heard of that. Um, there's, there was supposed to be no um, cure for tetanus, and it was a death sentence. Uh, now, apparently, they used this antibody therapy against tetanus. Um, was used successfully to treat toxic shock syndrome in 1970. No, it, it wasn't. Um, not in my timeline. And then finally in 95, um, it was used on in, in Ebola. Treat eight patients. Though a treatment was... Uh... Oh, this is interesting. I just read this. A treatment was discovered recently in the 2013 Ebola epidemic in Africa. I, I've not heard of there being a treatment for Ebola. Only one of the eight infected patients died that got the immunotherapy versus 80% uh, mortality at that time. That's interesting. It, it was like 99% mortality in, in my timeline. So they're saying that uh, seven out of eight patients survived with this immunotherapy thing. So that's like, they weren't saying anything nearly that clear at the time. $10 from Transcend1111. Thank you very much. Stay light and continue to shift. Always a good plan. Thank you. Okay, so yes, Ebola death rate changed. Use of uh, this history of using uh, antibodies has totally changed. Now it goes way back and was successful. Uh, I, I have, even so, I've never heard of it being used as a vaccine. And even in these examples... Um, it sounded like you already had the illness before they gave it to you. The following immunoglobulins, currently approved for infectious disease prophylaxis and immunotherapy. Okay, so uh, they have them um, for botulism, diphtheria, never heard of cytomegalovirus. Hepatitis A, measles, hepatitis B, Kawasaki disease, rabies, tetanus. See, like, um, there was no cure for rabies. That was like a death sentence before. Uh, tetanus. I'm going to have to check those and see if, what the death rate is on those. Vac vaccinia. Treatment of, treatment of progressive vaccinia infection. Varicella. So chicken pox. What would the death rate of tetanus Characterized by muscle spasms in the most common type, the spasms begin in the jaw. Last time I checked tetanus, there was like this, it could sit in your system for like, like a year. 
tetanus by infection with all right let's see neonatal tetanus have not heard of that didn't she usually die before you could have the baby diagnosis treatment mild tetanus severe tetanus let's just see what the survival rate is now mild cases of tetanus can be treated with tetanus immunoglobulin for 10 days so it looks like there's now a treatment for tetanus i i swear i've checked this before and there was still no treatment magnesium sulfate as an intravenous iv infusion to control spasm in order to survive a tetanus infection the maintenance of an airway and proper nutrition are required an intake of 3,500 3, to 4,000 calories and 150 grams of protein per day in liquid form. Tetanus, in particular the neonatal form, remains a significant public health. I've never even heard of the neonatal form. It wasn't there last time I checked the wiki. Neonatal tetanus, that's totally a new spiel. All right, so um, there's no, I'm not seeing what the survival rate here is, but apparently we've got some pretty good treatment, and it's this this funky um, immunoglobulin, which I think, um, human tetanus immunoglobulin injected intrathecally, never heard of that, increases clinical improvement from 4% to 35%. All right, so it wasn't even 4% before. It was a death sentence. There was no known survivors of tetanus that were human. Okay, so now they're saying the immunoglobulin raises it to 35% survival. It sounds like. I'm going to have to really look into what this um, neonatal one is. That's totally weird. Now, I did discuss last time I talked about tetanus that um, they were saying that it could like sit hidden in your system for like months or years. Like you aren't paranoid enough right now. You could have tetanus and not know about it and die from it next year. Dun, dun, dun. I mean, you used to just get tetanus and in a few weeks you died. End of story. Okay. Ah. Neonatal tetanus is a form of generalized tetanus that occurs in newborns, usually those born to mothers who themselves have not been vaccinated. If the mother has been vaccinated against tetanus, the infants acquire passive immunity and thus are protected. Huh, I've not heard of this. Now there's another example of passive immunity. Uh, if your mother was, was uh, got the shot, then why would the child even need the shot if they've already got passive immunity from their mother? I have not. I don't think I've heard of of babies getting antibodies from their mother uh, in that way, passive immunity. I'm going to have to look into that. There's something different about that. I've never heard, oh, the baby's immune to tetanus because the mother had a vaccine. That also should mean that if the mother ever had tetanus, the baby should be immune to tetanus. I've never heard of that either. Of course, everybody used to die from tetanus that got it. It usually occurs through infection of the unhealed umbilical stump. Okay, so they're saying that um, if the baby gets See, tetanus used to be when you got like something you'd scrape, like you'd scrape metal. Uh, last time I checked, suddenly they said it had nothing to do with metal. So I guess now um, if your umbilical stump doesn't heal and it's cut with a non-sterile instrument, common in many developing countries, Responsible for 14% of all neonatal deaths. Huh, that was not on here last time. Last time I looked at the wiki for tetanus. The death toll from neonatal tetanus reduced by 90% between 1990 and 2010. Huh. Okay, so that's a whole new thing. So, 
Okay. <laughs> Cephalic tetanus, limited the muscles and nerves of the head, occurs after trauma to the head area. All right, so apparently you can just get like tetanus any old time now. <laughs> oh, I got some, uh, bang your head, you got tetanus. I uh, you got a, an open wound, you got tetanus. I used to be you'd have to like at least get in the dirt or something. Okay, whatever. So tetanus is really different. I'm getting like way off on a tangent and all this weird stuff. Okay. All right, so that's how you can get Tom Hanks's immunoglobulin antibodies, apparently. All right, so there's another near weird thing. So this is not a long-term vaccine, supposedly, because the antibodies, it's kind of vague, but they're kind of saying the antibodies don't stay in your system. Um, and the antibodies are, don't become part of your antibody memory. So when they die out, then they're gone, supposedly. It's kind of wishy-washy on that. Um, okay, but now there's the other kind of vaccine. Now, when they're talking about we need vaccines for the C, um, they're mostly talking about this RNA vaccine, which is supposed to be longer lasting than the Tom Hanks antibody vaccine. Um, so what the heck is an RNA vaccine? Now, I've already described to you what I remember original vaccines, a little piece of the virus or a dead or weakened virus plus some poison. Okay, so what's an RNA vaccine? This is creepy. And this is one reason why I super don't want to get one of these. Uh, first of all, there's nothing here in the history of an RNA vaccine. Like, it doesn't say, like, when it was ever used, ever tested. I can't find any information in an RNA vaccine. Okay, so I probably should go and give a quickie thing for those who don't understand DNA versus RNA. And I actually probably should have read up on this a little bit. But basically, the DNA is in your cell nucleus and it codes for, like, supposedly your whole genetic structure and your eye color and all that stuff. That, that's the basics. There's been some variations to that story in, in recent years, but that's the basics. So how does this information get um, translated from the DNA and the messages sent out to your whole body? It's through RNA. RNA is basically kind of like a, a, a semi, not exact, but it, it copies the basic structure of the DNA, but it leaves the nucleus and it, it, it has the coding to tell the cells what to do. So it's basically like the messenger from the DNA, and it is modeled after the DNA. So what's an RNA vaccine? So RNA is what tells your cells what to do. So what they're talking about here is that they um, create RNA in the laboratory, and um, then they inject the RNA into you. So then the RNA goes into your cells and tells your cells what to do. Now the old vaccine, it just exposes your body to a piece of the germ and then says, look at this, it's bad. And then your body does its own natural thing. But with an RNA vaccine, they're injecting RNA into your cell that directly takes over your cell and tells the cell what to do. So that's a lot more creepy because you can only pray that the directions given to your cells are 100% good for you. And I don't think we know crap all about how cells really work totally yet they're going to take over the cell and command it with this vaccine that they're going to inject into you that you're not going to be able to get rid of. Once it's in, it's taken over your cells. Okay, so if it goes wrong, you're screwed. Uh, so this RNA vaccine, so supposedly what this RNA vaccine is going to do is it's going to go into your cell and take over your cell and tell your cell to make an antigen that happens to also be on the germ that you're trying to protect against. So like a, like a, a piece of protein that is on the C, oh, now they will inject something into you that will tell your own cells to, to create this protein. Um, and I, I guess probably, um, release the protein into your system. One would imagine. I, um, and if you trust the government or whoever's in charge of it to effectively do this and then take over your cells and have your cells make this antigen that is a foreign protein to your body and does not belong in there, now your body is going to be making it itself 
for a long time, like probably years. Um, and, um, you're only praying that your own immune system won't notice that your cells are making crap that they're not supposed to make and then turn on that, those cells. Um, you're only hoping that that piece of protein doesn't have any toxic effects on your body because you're going to be making it for years. You're only hoping that they did, uh, the process a hundred percent accurately and that there's no side effects. And you're only hoping that they didn't program some stuff in that they didn't tell you about either on purpose or by accident. All these things you're only hoping. As far as I can tell, currently there is no evidence of any human testing on RNA vaccines. Um, all right. Um, benefits. I, I don't really understand half of what they're talking about here. Um, the MR messenger RNA is RNA basically. There's no need for nuclear uptake. I don't see how this is a, a benefit. You don't have to do nuclear uptake. You don't do nuclear uptake in normal vaccines either. So why would this be a benefit? Um, the risk of being integrated into the host genome is averted. I think that this is the benefit. Oh, it's the benefit over DNA vaccines. And DNA vaccines are also something that never existed for me. Uh, DNA vaccine is when uh, you're directly injecting DNA into your cells and that'll be permanent. Okay, so advantage over DNA. This is like totally moving the goalposts here. Instead of saying, is RNA vaccines good for you or not? They're saying, oh, look, they're better than DNA vaccines. Well, who the heck said I'm getting a DNA vaccine? Uh, I'm not. So I don't care if RNA vaccines might be safer than DNA vaccines, if they're both unsafe. I mean, what's better, getting a kick to the head or getting a kick to the butt? Um, you know, since when did the whole question get moved over to getting a kick? You know, I'm like, I say they're both bad. It's, it's, it's moving the, the storyline over to these two equally or possibly both likely crappy options. It's just like how the, they've managed to move the um, storyline for opening up the lockdown to should we do it a little sooner or a little longer? What happened to we shouldn't have done it to start with and we should not end lockdown? But no, no, the argument now is, um, you know, did we do it soon enough? And should we wait two months, six months, or only a month? And uh, that's, you know, it's another example of it. Okay, so um, somewhere in here they had disadvantages, adverse effects and risks. First of all, these advantages, like I said, are only comparing to DNA vaccines. They're not compared to just like not doing it or traditional vaccines, which is creepy. All right, so all the uh, advantages are just over DNA vaccines that I can see. An RNA vaccine is a novel type of vaccine for, a, for a providing acquired immunity through RNA. So novel means untested, and you don't know what the hell is going to happen. And maybe they tested a little bit on rats, and rats only live three years anyway. All right, so adverse effects or risks. The, the RNA strand in the vaccine may elicit an unintended immune reaction. Yeah, your body is just churning out antigen that your body doesn't want to have. That could cause a problem. The RNA vaccine sequences are designed to mimic those produced by mammalian cells. Well, pff, how do you do that when the mammalian cells do not produce antigens that your body hates? I mean, how much mimicking can you do? Preclinical, preclinical experience. I, I'm not sure exactly what preclinical experience means. With vaccine candidates for SARS and MERS. Again, MERS, a lot of people never heard of that being a thing in their timeline. But in this timeline, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome apparently was a near pandemic. All right, so um, so now they're saying they, they had preclinical experience. And I don't really know what that means have raised concerns about exacerbating lung disease either directly or as a result of anti-dependent antibody dependent enhancement i'm gonna have to check what the heck that is what is anti-dependent enhancement anyway it doesn't sound good possible concern could be that some rna-based vaccine platforms induce potent type 1 interferon responses which have been associated not only with inflammation but also potentially with autoimmunity Oh, so it could cause autoimmune disease. Dum, dum, dum. That's not a problem in the current timeline. 
joking there. Thus, identification of individuals at an increased risk of autoimmune reactions before RNA vaccination may allow reasonable precautions to be taken. Yeah, well, I if they try to push this thing, I'm going to be first in line saying I have a risk of autoimmune reaction. Um, how many loopholes are they going to leave? I will look for anything I have to. Anyway, this whole thing is weird. This RNA vaccine, that's what they want to do for this, the C. It's not the old school vaccine. A lot of people are going around going, well, if I've had vaccines before, this is not, uh, in current timeline, a vaccine that as far as I can tell, have ever been used on humans or even tested that much. Um, preclinical candidates for SARS and MERS, apparently from what I can see, um, they, uh, they never use this in humans, but they've already got all these vaccines already for the C going to human trials as best. I, they're very cagey about the details of what these vaccines are, but as best I can tell, this RNA thing is the number one. So, ugh, weird. They're going to inject something that takes over your cells and causes you to pump out viral antigen for years. And that's if they do it right. I got a doppelganger, a doctor doc, doppelganger. It could be, I, I hear it all the time. I must look like hundreds of people because I always hear that I look just like somebody in blah, 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 state I've never been to. I think he would make an excellent doctor. Um, I probably would, but you know what? I just, I can't put up with a lot of bull crap, so I probably wouldn't. Um, of course, I was better at it when I was younger. I think everybody's more pliable when they're younger. I would probably be fairly good at it, I have to say. Because I'm really detail-oriented and I'm really good at um, figuring out what's going on from little clues um, and kind of putting all the um, clues together. There were tetanus shots in my old timeline, but it was prevention, exactly. You stepped on a rusty nail um, yeah, you would get the shot. You know, what used to be is they would say if you could get the shot, uh, before the tetanus kicked in. So you had to like run, you had like three days to get the shot and it was always rusty nails. Now, in last time I checked in current timeline, uh, it has nothing to do with rust and that's an old wives tale. And I, I, I regret that at the time when it was, um, said to be from, um, metal, I never looked up what was so special about metal. I, I seem to recall it was some kind of um, a bacteria that liked to live on metal, which I always thought was weird. I had asked for more info on it, and nobody could really tell me, and I had never really checked online. So uh, I can't exactly say what's changed, but I do remember it was something that used to live on metal. That's why um, you only had to worry about it if you touched a rusty nail, but apparently now it's like any old germ. Once every 10 years, they would change it to once every eight years. Um, yeah, it used to be once every 10 years, but then if 10 years passed and you didn't step on a rusty nail yet, they wouldn't give you one. But then if you stepped on a rusty nail and got a big old scratch and it had been more than 10 years, then they would give you the shot. In my timeline, tetanus was an extremely rare infection and very treatable. That's interesting. In mine, it was a death sentence. That's why they would scare the crap toads out of you to get down there and get that shot. Because once it kicked in, um, it was treatable if you got the shot before it kicked in. But if you waited until symptoms, you were dead meat. Dead. Yeah, so the rusty nail is an old wives' cell. It has nothing to do with tetanus now. And it wasn't last time I checked, which was like, I don't know, six months, a year ago. So tetanus is like totally different now, basically. What are you talking about? Tetanus is the C. Yes, yes, it could be because the C causes nerve damage. Uh, last I checked, it doesn't cause lockjaw, but just give it another like couple weeks. My cat has bit me four times in the last four months. Once a month is good. 
God. You might need to get like the cat whisperer or something because you know cat bites do get infected easy um, compared to like dog bites and other stuff. Cat bites and people bites, there's some nasty bites. I've known people have deep dog bites, no problemo, but cat bites, just watch really carefully for infection. You know what? I think the C might, they might try to pull the cancer baloney, um, but they need a little more time. They're going to cover like every other base first. Vaccines are getting more and more scary with every jump we make. Yes. Yes, I totally agree with that. And it's weird because there really wasn't a lot of evidence that vaccines were dangerous before. And now there's a ton of it. Because I have looked into this a lot, and uh, there was, you know, there was a few things where, yeah, well, maybe, but there really wasn't evidence. Now there is evidence. I mean, before it, it made a certain logic sense, but there wasn't evidence. So the evidence piles up now in current timeline that vaccines are dangerous, and right then they come out with this new, untested, creepy vaccine and are... Starting to push that everybody get the dang thing. You don't have to be a believer in the Bible to, to, to get suspicious um, about this. The only benefit from existing vaccines would be to stimulate the TH1 and TH2. Um, yeah, no, they're going to have you pumping out your own antigen out of your own cells and an, an alien antigen that is not native to your body and may be bad for you and your own cells will be making it and then your cells will see that your antibodies will see this and hopefully only attack the antigen and then keep uh, like it'd be like a constant vaccine basically because when you get an old school vaccine you just get the the germ once but now your cells will be pumping out germ antigen 24 7 so it would be like a constant vaccine that does not sound good so your antibodies they should be regularly going oh more germ more germ like every day every hour i mean it's <laughs> like having a vaccine every day like a small vaccine every day My cat bite sent me to the hospital and needed three different types of antibiotics. Yeah, I got bit in the leg once uh, by a cat, and uh, it was ugly. Uh, you know, I've, I've gotten bit by a dog a couple times, just healed right up like nothing. Um, and the cats don't even have that big a, a fang, you know. Uh, but, oh, man, they say cats and humans have dirty mouths. They just have a lot of germ that um, reacts badly. Uh, rabies, tetanus. What did I get when I got that? I know I got a couple shots. I can't remember if it was rabies or vaccine after that bite. I don't think it was rabies. I think they gave me a tetanus. I got bit by the cat. Yeah, they gave me a tetanus. And then the next day they gave me antibiotics because the person on duty was a dum dum. The next day I went back because it never stopped uh, bleeding. And then the next guy freaked out, the next doctor. She's a crazy cat, but a great personality. Yeah, no, you really want to train that cat. I, I really would suspect, I really suggest that you train. If they're just fun, but I had a cat like that when he was a kitten, he would fun bite, um, but it would break skin and some, a little bit. He was, he was just eight weeks old, so he couldn't wail on you that hard. But I fought with him for three months to train him not to bite me because I knew as he got bigger, those bites were going to start poking down deeper. That's what I mean, having a vaccine response every day will kill you. RNA vaccine, I had to look it up myself. That is nuts. Yeah, then look up at the DNA vaccine. Oh, well, RNA ba vaccine's better than the DNA vaccine. So the DNA vaccine is going to be permanent. Do, do. You know, cat had rusty teeth. Yeah, I know, you know, I should have, I, I kind of wondered about that at the time. I'm like, wow, well, deep, deep cat bite, deep puncture by nail maybe they're just being extra careful now you know i didn't think reality was shifting on me back then that was um the 90s so, yeah early 70s 80s yeah right around 90 
Rallo Clark is in, Preliminal. Got the new DD74, Morpheus Dreams of Hope. Got some new people in. Okay, so I think I've covered all of the weird C business. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but apparently the Pentagon is admitted to some um, weird UFO footage because reality is not weird enough. Why would they come out with it now? You only can wonder. Um, talking about a soft disclosure, everybody's so busy freaking out about COVID. It's like, pfft. Oh, and UFOs, who cares? So apparently it's some old footage, but they've kind of corroborated that this weird footage was found and that we that was taken and we never figured out what it was and it's still unsolved. Uh, still, it's kind of a big step for the Pentagon. Um, I don't remember seeing that footage anyway. Uh, I just, I have to say though, I don't really track more footage of little lights in the sky. I, I think I've seen like hundreds of those and I just don't feel like I learned anything from them. So, you know, as soon as they come up with some UFO info that's a little bit more, um, has a little more meat to it. I mean, the Pentagon admitting that they had this footage and that it, it's unknown is interesting, though. It is interesting. It is a step. I'm not sure where, but it is a step. The sea was to hide the aliens. Maybe the aliens are to hide the sea. I don't know. I just feel like uh, any second now, it's just getting weirder and weirder. Diet is crucial to health, and doctors don't talk about it anymore. I don't think they ever talked about it, really. I mean, not a lot. I think it has gotten worse, but... Pentagon came out with aliens, and nobody cared. I know, I know. I've seen a UFO footage released from Pentagon three times now each a different timeline so what i was what i was hearing is that that footage was released years ago but not corroborated by the pentagon uh and now they've come forward and kind of said yes that's our footage and we admit that it's ours and we don't know where it came from i, I haven't totally looked into it but that's what i'm kind of hearing I, I wondered if that footage was out there or if it's an me but I just don't follow that stuff closely enough. So dogs now have to social distance. Yeah, I know. Now they're saying cats maybe can get it or maybe they can't. And then blah, blah, blah. I'm just, I'm not worried about it. It's stupid. I'm just not worried about it anymore. I have the craziest UFO story with three people in the car. I've been thinking about doing a video. I don't know. Can you get any weirder than the ones that are already out there? Uh, you know, I don't worry about aliens either. I figure if there really are aliens out in outer space, they could probably kick our butts all over town. And if they wanted to, they would have done it. Uh, so therefore, um, I mean, it probably should be pretty easy to kill us all if they wanted. So I'm really, really, really curious about what kind of other... Um, sentience is out there if it's outer space or interdimensional i'm really 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 curious about that but um i just don't see any way of finding out unless like you can really just talk to them yourself or they come down here so that's that's the main reason i don't follow it it's just because it's just hundreds and hundreds of videos of weird lights in the sky and now with video editing software so easy to get a hold of and learn you can't trust any new footage i mean just about any of it could be faked i mean if the government admits to it then at least that's interesting so that's why i kind of perked my ears up i think people will just shrug and ignore it if they present a real alien on the news i don't think it's that bad yet <laughs> who knows in this timeline though yeah who knows <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I've seen a couple really weird things in the sky that definitely count as UFOs. Um, I don't know what um, they really were. You know, um, weird phen atmospheric phenomena. Uh, one was, one was, um, how long ago was that? Maybe 10 years ago. Maybe like, maybe more like six years ago. I was walking the dog. Um, I often walk the dog at night just because I'm kind of a night owl. And by the time I get home, especially in the winter, it's already dark. So I just walk the dog at night. Dog doesn't care what time of day it is. She'll take a walk anytime. My old dog. So I, I had this route and I walked it and there's these mountains. And I just happened to be looking, you know, forwards. And uh, I saw behind the mountains this weird 
um, light. I don't know how to describe it. It was like a, it was like if a flashlight was lit on both ends and was tumbling end over end, that's how the light was moving. But you couldn't really see what was in the middle because in those days the sky was pitch black. Um, so you could kind of see that some of the stars were getting blotted out, but you couldn't see what was in the middle. Uh, the light was not as, as powerful as like a beam, but it, it looked like a glowy thing on both ends was tumbling end to end. But here's the tripper, okay? That thing must have been like 10 football fields long because it, it went behind the mountains and thems is some big mountains. And um, the thing was like half the height of the mountains when it went behind the mountains. And so it, it was further than the mountains since it went behind. So the whole thing is like impossible, basically. I mean, almost impossible. It doesn't really fit with any stories I've heard. And uh, I don't know what to make of that weird light phenomena. Um, yeah, weird. Okay, so there's one of my UFO stories. I haven't had any like abductions or anything. Just I've seen weird stuff far away. I mean, to my knowledge, that's it. I mean, they erased my brain, but good if there was anything else. All right, so, dum, dum, dum. I think I've covered all the sea stuff. I got the UFO stuff. I think there was some mention about the Pentagon admitting that, like, they had kind of an X-Files program that would investigate these things. Um, I really checked into it, but that's kind of interesting if the X-Files are real, basically. <laughs> you know, it's like, what other TV show is real next? There was, was there really a Mulder? Um kind of kind of going that way i've been reading case files since i was like 12 you know i've read a bunch of them back in the old timeline they're all different now everything i read back then is a, is either a little bit or a lot different there's a whole bunch of really neat stuff now that wasn't in my old timeline my old timeline the wow signal was nothing it just turned out to be uh background radiation from the big bang supposedly in this timeline, the wow signal was never explained. Um, there's a whole bunch more stuff in this timeline. This is definitely way more an alien UFO timeline than my old one. So you probably had a lot more good stuff in this timeline to study. I uh, love the honestly craziest thing. Okay, so yeah, you guys should get together first munch and uh, talk to Dark Wolf about the. He's the UFO expert, I guess, for the current timeline. Uh, my timeline didn't have some good stuff. A uh, skinny bob. My my timeline did not have skinny bob. That that's the kind of stuff I do watch because it's not little bitty lights in the sky. Um, Rendlesham kind of came out of nowhere. I'm pretty sure it's kind of an older Emmy for me, but I am pretty sure that Rendlesham is an Emmy for me, and uh, definitely an older one. But it kind of came out of nowhere. I'm like, how did I not know about Rendlesham? Uh, okay. So, anyways, yum 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 yum. First Emmy for today, dum dum dum. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna do this one because um, this one which I have down here. This is from John Austin, and he kept trying to tell me this last week, but I was so out of it. Um, when the Star Wars fans, when the Death Star blows up Alderaan, uh, what color was the light? <laughs> Because I really remember this just being plain old boring white. Um, apparently in this timeline, this is the start of the Death Star exploding. I'm not going to play too much video because copyright. But apparently, now this is the original uh, 1977 footage before it was remastered or reworked or whatever. Uh, it was green in this timeline, even the original. Green. This is it. Now, that was not uh, green in my timeline. It, it just wasn't green. It was white, okay? Um, I had a boring timeline, and everything was white. And it blows up Alderaan with the very bad, um, well, good special effects for the time now, meh. So, yes, green. I agree with you, John Austin. It was not green. Now, there's this is the new reworked footage. I'm going along. So now it comes down the chute like this. And then it shoots out like that. So it's a little brighter with these little pulses. Still green. Dun, dun, dun. The explosion is a lot more impressive now. 
So uh, it's green in both of them in case anybody wants to say they redid it. And uh, it wasn't. So I agree with you, John Austin. All right. And then uh, John came up with another one. What the heck is a Siamang? Ever heard of a Siamang? Should probably just put it on here. Spelling. Do, do, do. Lots of weird monkeys and stuff now. We're going to get a search here. Um, these things. So it's some kind of gibbon. They've got these huge throat things now, so they're like frogs. Are we the first candy to make? No advertising. Turn off. I better not get a copyright for advertising because then I'll be really mad. Can you imagine getting copyright? All right, so these guys um, with these giant throat things, I didn't have these. These guys, uh, so there's some kind of monkey gibbon thing. They make really weird noises. Let me see if they're doing it now, probably. Look at that mouth. Did not have you guys. Oh, I got to turn the sound back on. Hopefully that's not too loud. <coughs> kind of loud. Actually, the sound kind of sounds familiar. I just don't remember having this giant throat bag. A lot of creatures in this timeline have really giant throat bags. Um, what is it? That sea lion thing, and some birds had it at first, but now we've got these creepy monkeys. So, yeah, Siamang. I have not heard of that word, though, Siamang. It's like orangutan and Siamese. They're they're really gorilla-like things. Look like they have like a giant tumor. So yeah, I agree that I didn't have those. They're big guys too. They really remind me a lot of um, the older gorillas with but without the um, giant throat tumor. I saw a yellow sun last night in Flatliners movie. It was a good bit of footage. Nice big yellow sun the way it always was. Yeah, you know, it's not even really yellow when it sets hardly anymore. For a while, it was really quite yellow when it would set. Scarab got banned because of an ad. Oh, are you serious? Well, you have to have three strikes, though, don't you? But sometimes they'll give you three all in one second. Siamang. All right. Yeah, I don't know. How would I play the ads, but then you not see them? That would be tricky. Because if you jump off of the channel, the ads stop playing. It, it knows if you're watching. Industrial Light and Magic changed the landscape of how special effects were done. Yeah, but that was the original 77 footage So uh, that I just showed you. The crappy old footage. Uh, what happened to my hair? <sighs> You know, it's really distracting to be able to see myself over there. I have to not look at that. The only good thing about the sea is people staying home. The earth is healing and nature all over. Well, you know, I, I've said before, Rallo Clark, that I really think that that's also just another excuse for the ME to have animals all in the city. Because uh, I've talked about this for like over a year now that... Um, Animals used to be scared of the city and not come in. And for a year, even before the sea, there, there started to be all these, um, oh, these animals came in because they were thirsty, like as if we've never had a drought in 100 years, and suddenly now they're thirsty. Um, they're coming in because of this, because of that. Um, uh, you know, so now they're coming in because of the sea. Uh, first of all, a lot of these places, they're saying they're coming in um, those places from what I hear from actual humans on the ground have not been like totally abandoned. Yeah, there's fewer people out, but there's still a, to a ton of people. Like Escondido, okay, um, San Diego area, um, San Marcos, around this area here. Um, when I first moved here, 
is about like how it is now as far as number of people. Because when I first moved here, the, 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 you know, they say the sidewalks roll up at dark. You know, it's kind of like not many things are open late. The grocery store, the latest one was open till 10. Um, it wasn't, it was very quiet after a, like eight. Uh, then as I lived here longer, it got busier and busier and more like Los Angeles and places were open till midnight and one, and it's not quite LA, but there was a lot more activity. Okay, so now with the sea, it's rolled back to kind of like when I first moved here, like 20, 10, 20 years ago. But no animals came into town 20 years ago. So if I hear that animals are coming to town, and I'm starting to hear it, coyotes are coming to town. They didn't come into town 20 years ago when it had been slow for like ever. So why would they suddenly all come into town now? So I don't buy it. I don't buy it that that's why they're coming to town. I think they're coming to town because animals are different now. And the sea is just another excuse being made for why they're coming into town. The wild signal came from Orion in my old timeline, but now in this world it came from Sagittarius, old M.E., and it still baffles me. You know, I didn't remember where wow signal came from, but probably because it didn't come from anywhere in my timeline because it was discovered to be background radiation from the Big Bang. So they got this weird signal, they freaked out, and they went, oh, nope, it's just backbound radiation from the Big Bang. So it's everywhere. So it didn't come from anywhere in my old timeline. I saw a video of the sun and people claiming UFOs are existing in it. I don't know. There's a hundred weird stories here. Um, I, I don't even know what to say. There, there's so many weird stories and weird evidence, and there's there's a little bit of evidence for every weird story, too. I wonder what's weird syndrome being locked in your house. Well, yeah, maybe people will get agoraphobia and never want to leave, and then they'll say, oh, they're scared. Uh, they'll come out because of the sea, and they've learned to stay in, and then the, that's why there's less people on the roads now. Lockdown syndrome. Animals seem to be less and less scared of humans. Exactly. And it, even before the sea, uh, I used to hardly ever get a good look at a rabbit around here because they never got close. But now, you know, for the last few years, the wild rabbits will sit five feet away and just stare at me like they're stoned. Like they'll stare. They don't stare at me. They stare out. Like, I don't know if they're looking at me at this from the side of their eye and they look that way and I'm here. You would think they'd look at me, but they don't. They look this way and they look like they're stoned and I've actually had to honk my horn, like move it. Um, I never got such good looks of them. Um, some of the, like the road runners, big, big, interesting birds. Uh, they started sitting on the fence. I never saw one close before. Your mic keeps clickety clacking. Uh, weird. I'm not touching it. I don't know. Does anybody else hear clickety clacks from my mic? Let me know. Wouldn't be against wolves being friendly. Foxes. There were no friendly foxes. Foxes were little monsters. I mean, they're cute, but they were not. There were no pet foxes. There were no fennec foxes. Did not exist. Stone. Uh, yeah, I'm like, what? The first time I saw it, I'm like, what is wrong with this rabbit? Um... They, there was a while that they were doing it regularly. They've kind of gotten a little smarter that they'll hop off slowly now. Try resetting your mic. I don't even know how to do that. Honestly. What, do you just unplug it? The year the entire world took off. Yeah, how do you reset your mic? <laughs> like, somebody tell me. I have one of those, um, what do you call those things? Um, the mic that everybody has. All right, I'll, I'll try resetting it later. There's really no reason for it. Nothing's touching it. Let's, let me put this a little further away. Yeah, no, that's in its normal spot, so I don't know. Unplug it. Ah, see, here's the thing. If I unplug the mic, then I have to reboot. Um, I have to reboot OBS Studios, or it will not recognize the mic. So I, I if unless it's really bad, I, I'm gonna have to. We'll have to stick it out because 
Um, if I reboot OBS Studios, then I lose the, the whole stream and then I'll have to start a new stream. I'm pretty sure. Well, well, or there'd be a long wait. I don't think I'll lose the whole stream, but you'll be buffering for a long time because OBS Studios is what sends the signal. It's not too awful. Okay. Okay, yeah, I'll just, I'll, I'll definitely do that. I actually do it fairly. I'll just try plugging it in better. I don't know if that'll help any. Um, I do unplug and plug it kind of regularly, but. Okay, so. <laughs> Where was I anyway? Okay, so orangutans. Let's talk about orangutans, shall we? A lot of people remember it as orangutangs with a G-S. That's how I remember it. Uh, but now it's orangutans. The G is gone. It's an older ME, but it is one I remember, that there was a G on them boys. All right. I've said before, and I've covered this, that orangutans, tangs, for me, didn't originally have this giant flange. That's what they're calling them. The males did not have this giant flange. They look kind of like females, just a little bit bigger. Somewhere over time, they just started growing this big fat flange. And, you know, first it was like this. And then it was like, and then it was like, let me see if I can find a middle one. Then it was a little bigger. And then it got to, yeah, like here. And then the next thing you know, it's like this. And it just keeps going. Okay, so um, pretty soon they're going to be like, they're going to be like radar dish faces. I mean, it's almost there. Okay, so then lately I started to see this. What's up with the big flappy boob thing? And, and then they've got this weird bumpy thing on the head now. There was not... Uh, let me see a better vision. This, this, this was not here before the last time I looked when I complained about the flanges, which was probably like a year ago. But I have looked at them since then. Uh, they did not have any of this, uh, none of that. Uh, and then they did not have this. I saw this. I'm like, what? What is that thing? It, it kind of looked like um, Job of the Hut. All right, so then I saw this a couple days ago. And um, what is this? I mean, like... That looks more like a proto-human. Is that even an orangutan? Um, that looks like a proto-human. It doesn't look like orangutan. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on, but they've, they've split, okay? So now we have... Wiki. We've got these three kinds. There was only one kind last I checked. Now we've got Bornean orangutans. And uh, I think those are them creepy ones. Bornean. Let me just show you the Borneans. So that weird one in the front uh, on my thumbnail is a Bornean orangutan, I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly. Okay, so yes, here we go. This is a Bornean orangutan. Uh, they have these giant, um, not only do they have the flanges, but they've got this thing under their neck like a giant neck goiter thing so speaking of those siamangs uh, this neck goiter thing is just really becoming a thing um there's another one with a giant neck goiter another one so these are the bornians they've got like quite the head of hair they really just look like um they don't look real to me and they weren't here last time i looked into orangutans um, that's some weird business. <laughs> Did not, they kind of, some of them were starting to develop some like floppy boob material, but uh, they did not have giant neck goiters. A lot of things have giant neck goiters in this timeline. Uh, this one's got dreads over here. So it was more like this, but this now is like a neck goiter and some boobs. It's not just boobs. Hopefully I don't get, uh, Actually, I don't even have, I don't even have my video. I gave up on having my videos monitored, monetized. Oh, there's another one. Pretty cool looking. Dum, dum, dum. 
So now they've got like, what the heck? Look at that thing. The obese orangutan. I've covered before. I don't remember animals getting this fat, but um, Britain's fattest orangutan. Um, apparently, wild animals get fat easy here compared to my old timeline. Really fat. Oh, I wish I could get that one bigger. The really neat ones usually won't get big, but um, yeah, it looks like Jabba, Jabba the Hutt meets Orangutan. It's really goofy too. Okay, so there's one kind of Orangutan. Then we have the Sumatran Orangutan, which um, also looks pretty weird. Let me just do that one. Sumatran. These look more like my old school guys. You can see the flanges are a little different. Um, instead of having a separate flap, it just looks like the face is really wide. None of these look like the one I saw a year ago. They all have subtle differences. When they split into three, um, they just... So this one has kind of a, a more of a flange up here, and then the face is down, like the mouth is almost separate from the flange. Uh, didn't have that before. So it's the males that have these flanges, so I'm mostly just looking at them. It looks like a little bit of neck goiter still, though. Is that also one? These guys kind of look more doleful or something. A um, lot of variation. So what else do we have? Sumatran. What's the third one? What? All right. Three extant species, but what? They're, they're talking about six of them right down here. Let me just click on this. I just really read that there's three extant species. So it looks like there's some subspecies already, so expect more splitting. Okay, we did Bornean. In 2017, it was reported that the third species, the Tampanuli orangutan. So some of those images before must have been Tampanuli. But supposedly they separated 670,000 years ago. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, they separated about six months ago. Anyways, yeah, weird. I call uh-uh on that. All right, so I kind of was checking through the uh, monkey ape lands to see what new weird ones. There's a lot of them, but um, this one is either new or it's gotten a lot weirder, so it kind of sticks out now. It's actually been a while since I looked at uh, Goofy Monkeys. So this one, I don't remember this one, this black tufted marmoset monkey. It looks like it's half monkey, half um, regular mammal. See, the, it looks like this head does not belong it, on here. It's almost like it's half squirrel, half monkey. The, the head just looks... It, it might have been there before, but it, it looks a lot weirder now, so it's really sticking out. It's a squirrel monkey. Now, this guy with the dead head, like the corpse head, that guy was here before, uh, but I don't remember the white tuft around him. There's also one of these that, um, th that one looks like, I don't know what, it, it's kind of like half bat, half monkey. But there's one that has a bright red uh, bald head, too, that's really creepy. But that's still, that's an older ME for me a couple of years ago. Do -do. A lot of the weird monkeys I saw a few years ago look yet weirder. Black tufted marmot. See, it sits like a squirrel. It acts like a squirrel, but it's a monkey. It's got a monkey head and a squirrel body and they, they don't look like they go together look 
It looks like somebody was playing Photoshop on that. So, yeah, that guy, no. That's an, that's either new or newly newly um newly weird looking. Maybe it was a lot of these start out really plain and then they just get stranger and stranger. I don't know if any of you guys have been looking at the weird monkeys. Just type in weird monkey and see what you find. See the guy with this giant nose? That's older for me. The guy with the blue face here. These things, oh my God. These things just get weirder and uglier. They look like a, a cartoon now. Those are the first weird ones and they are just ongoing. Ongoing strange. They just, they totally look weird. Well, I saw this. Not sure what it is. Um, that might be that thing we were just looking at. That's that weird baboon. Oh my gosh, that thing is so weird. This one is also an older one, but the, the face is, has delineated more from the body and the ears are bigger than last time I checked it. Um, this nose is bigger than last time I checked it. But overall, it still looks the same. This is another one. Um, this neck flap has delineated a little more. Uh, but oh, And then the coloration here versus the white body has changed. It used to be more of a, a same coloration. But overall, it looks the same. Let's see who else is on here. So this is supposed to be some kind of monkey with a human face. That's in some kind of zoo. Well, I haven't quite figured out what's going on with this, but a lot of times these things show up kind of vague like that, and then a monkey shows up like a species that really is that. So I don't know what's going on. Right now we just have this really bad um, Chinese zoo black-capped capuchin monkey. So I'm, I'm kind of expecting this to show up and become like something. So it's really weird and creepy looking, so it's just... Uh, right along the timeline's alley. Okay, there's those, that weird baboon again. That thing just does not stop getting... Just when I think it can't get any weirder, it still gets weirder. All right, so there's some of the creepy monkeys. Actually, some that I was seeing before I'm not seeing. I'll have to dig into this more. Oh, here's another one of those fat monkeys. I, I think I talked about that about like a year ago. Uh, monkeys can get super fat now. Used to be animals kind of, especially more the more wild um, genetics animals, used to kind of have a limit on how fat they would get. They would just stop eating. Okay, here's, here's one of those weird monkeys I, I saw before. Um, the face now, the snout has changed a little, but overall that's about how it was last time I saw it. All MEs, but these are all older ones. Uh, the faces have gotten more blue on these guys. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with those. Colobus and Golan. I, I don't think either they were just more mellow looking or something, but there's definitely a different look on that one. So, okay, so black and super blue, orangutan. Got all those. Okay, those are like the least weird of the animals because it just gets more weird after that. Most of the stuff I have after here is weirder than those. So we got some weird stuff. Okay, I covered bears and all the weird ones I could find maybe six months a year ago, but a new one showed up and it was found by the sharp-eyed... Uh, user on on retconned known as will work for answers user will work for answers found these things you've heard of lions and tigers and bears oh my but now we have uh, lion bears oh my it is the golden moon bear that looks like a lion and a bear it's supposedly really a bear but look at that mane. It looks like a lion. 
even says in there sometimes mistaken for lions so it's really a moon bear with a weird coloration moon bears are an me for me i do not remember having moon bears but uh when moon bears were showing up before they were all black there was no golden moon bears uh, so um there's a moon bear. They're, they're kind of like the sun bears. Uh, and similar to the sun bears, this side neck region just gets fatter and fatter. They look like cobras, they look cobra bears. Uh, so sun bears and boon bears both have the weird uh, chest patch here. And uh, they both are getting um, these side flaps on their necks. Uh, looks like these uh, moon bears are getting bigger side flaps and they're more fuzzy there's an example and the ears are like mickey mouse ears they've gotten really silly but so lately suddenly they've got so the sun bears have the giant tongue and they're they're the ones that are getting a whole sun on their neck i would not be surprised if the moon bears um i think here's here's a uh, sun bear versus a moon bear you can see they're both getting the flanges these are fuzzier they're both getting the side pieces so so these guys now have this coloration where they look like a lion bear called um and i wouldn't have missed this because if you type in uh moon bears this comes up on quite a few pictures if you just type it in now so i should have seen this before but but there we go so we have lion bears now I'm really curious to see how that neck patch develops. Um, if it becomes like a sickle, like a moon, or is it beginning like a full moon, or is it going to stay a sickle and the sun bears get the circle? Um, golden moon bear. See, there's whole books on it and everything. Here's one that's really golden. I've never seen that one before. Albino yeti looks like an albino bear. I don't know what the story is behind that. So, yes, we have lion bears. Very cool. All right. All right, I'm going to do one that's less weird before I get into more weird, 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 weirds. This one is only just kind of a little one. The book, 19, the book and the movie, 1984, the famous 1984 book, movie, um, I was looking it up for something because I wanted to remember um, the word they use for the language, doublespeak or something. Um, and I've looked stuff up on 1984 before because it's just such an interesting book and I've never seen this before. Ugh, I need to get the wiki. Wiki. All right, so apparently 1984 was once spelled out in current timeline. 19, it was 1984 all spelled out by George L. Orwell. I've never seen it spelled out. I have looked up stuff from 1984 quite a number of times. Uh, I was double checking um, Oceania because in my original timeline, Oceania was not a location around Australia, but was in fact only in the book 1984. I was double checking that to see if it was still true. Um, some of the other terminology I suddenly tried, I've never seen it spelled out. So currently in current timeline, it was originally written out like in this funky cursive 1984. And then when it was republished, often published as just 1984. Um, I, this timeline is so weird. It was like my old timeline, the name is the name. They don't just change the name. I'm republishing it and I'm spelling it different whatever I don't know. so anyway little weird me there um bleh. I don't know it's it's a tiny one but that book is interesting so I do keep an eye on it okay so another this is another bird that I have covered before but it has gotten kind of twice as weird remember having the neck waddles i did a whole video on the neck waddles of birds a while back quite a while back might be two two years ago back okay so 
The neck wattles on these birds are just getting stupider and long. I don't even know how they fly. So apparently, you know, um, even though I spent a lot of time looking for the longest, most bizarre photos of these birds last time, I only found a whole bunch of photos of them with half length. Uh, then again, maybe if I go back and watch my old video, they'll be ridiculously long now. But so the, the wattles, the, the neck things on these birds are now like twice as long as last time I checked. Uh, and some of them fuzz out and they've got this giant thing on their head now. That looks like, it does not look real. Uh, I don't know how they fly. This timeline has some really uh, different atmosphere and uh, things that couldn't fly before now apparently can't. Can you imagine trying to fly through trees with that and not getting it snagged on everything? It was totally insane. It was like this long before. Now it's like longer than the whole length of the freaking bird. I mean, really, people? How much longer is that waddle going to get? Is it going to be like a dog leash? You can just take your... Look at this one. Come on, people. <laughs> I can't just like... I don't know what to say. It was not that long. <laughs> just how far does it got to go? I'm wondering if this shows that they can floof it out because they couldn't floof it out before. It's like the same one, three different pictures. So it looks like they can, um, <laughs> they can bottle brush out their neck waddle now. I was thinking that was two different birds, but no, it's birds with and without floof action. <sighs> so another shark jump. For the timeline at one point does weird just get totally insane i should probably click on that look at those are a lot longer than they were too i've seen this bird before but the the tail feathers weren't that long <laughs> i'm gonna have to look through weird birds again if i get some time i've been like working quadruple overtime at work though so there is no time anywhere Wearing a tinfoil hat traps the waves and bounces them around in your head without dampening the material. You know, I looked that up and I just read that the first time like a year ago. So that, it's this timeline storyline anyway. Did you see the bats gliding thing that screams? It was on scarabs. Um, I'm not sure because I'm not sure what that is. I know there's a lot of weird bats. I check on comments I made and I find ones I have no memory of putting up. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes stuff I wrote just alters to match the current timeline, which is even more freaky. Because if I don't remember making it, maybe I just don't remember making it. But if I remember what I said and now I didn't say it, that's even like twice as weird. I wonder if 1984 had changed was one of my, um, one of my faves. There was another change I, I mentioned. Um, for me, it was, uh, the, the organization in 90, 1984 was in sock I N S O C and this timeline it's ing ing sock I N G S O C. Uh, also the, that black hand that's, it's kind of like, it's frayed, uh, and it wasn't for me. The, the black hand wasn't frayed in the um, logo. Oh, not very big, but anyway, this hand. So there was that change. Um, if you look at the um, territories, let me see if I can find one. I've had this on before, too. What do they look like now? <clears throat> that one's kind of tiny. There. Okay, so um, Britain used to be way out over here more, so it made sense that it was part of this territory. Um, and this used to be, like Africa used to be way down here for me. 
and Australia was down like way down here. So this and this being the same color used to make me more sense um, because they were kind of close. So if you look at the color territories now, they're, they're kind of weird because um, why would uh, Britain get to stay part of this territory when it's like stuck onto the orange territory, uh, Eurasia territory? It would be Eurasia. Now, if Britain was way out in the ocean and closer to over here, it made sense as a jumping stone, but yet it was in between so you could see either side getting it. But I just don't see how with the Britain like clamped onto Europe like it is now, um, how, um, how uh, Oceania... I, I, you know, I remember the names, but I always forget which one counts as which. How Oceania would keep a hold of Britain as a territory doesn't make nearly as much sense as in my old timeline for the book. So, so with the um, shifting of the actual, whatever that means, world geology, the, the, the territories in the book now make less sense to me than they did used to. Which makes me think that, you know my memories are more of an original timeline because the book made more sense then. It's kind of evidence to me that that is, if that book was made in my timeline or if that book was made in this timeline, then they, you would have thought they would have chosen more logical territories for the territory distributions for the book. I mean, there and there is okay, but this, this spread all out like that. And then England right there. All right. I mean, it's not the smoking gun of the universe, but it is interesting. Okay, so I covered that one. Bears, burp, burp, burp. Got you. Okay, I've got two more. I'm going to see what you guys are up to. Oh, you had sun bears? Yeah, I had neither. I didn't have any bears with funky, um, like, things on their neck. There weren't that many bears. There was polar, grizzly, and black. And then there was panda. Am I missing any? I, I don't think so. If there's maybe a really plain one that I'm missing, but I didn't have any spirit bears, uh, uh, no sun or moons. They didn't have those red panda things at all either. There's a whole, there's like probably at least twice as many bears now. My timeline was really boring compared to here. It won't let me type out monkey. Maybe it's some kind of curse word for a certain race. I don't know. It sounds ridiculous, though. I mean, 99% of the time when people type out monkey, they probably are not meaning some racist stereotype. Dark Wolf, you used to have a crook in your hands in your videos, or am I wrong? Also live in the country. Huh. No, I do not remember that um, for my timeline. I have seen weird things on some uh, other channels, like Mandela Affected. I've talked about this before. Uh, in, in some timelines, he was timelines he was missing. Um this side of the eye, this eyebrow, which would be this eyebrow if, yeah, this one. Um, it would show up to your left when you were looking at it. I'm not sure what stream software he uses and if it flips it or not, but it, it was the side of his face that was on the viewer's left side. Would um, sometimes be missing half his eyebrow, which I guess would be this side for you, since my streaming software flips. Sometimes he would miss half of his eyebrow and then he wouldn't. And then he had it back and it flipped several times. And uh, I would go back and look at all his old videos and all the videos would change. So, um, 
So it wouldn't surprise me. Also, one of my fr friends now has this funny crook in her finger and some weird um, nervous tick where she goes like this that she never had before for almost the entire. And I've known her for like 20 years, and she only got that like last year. And according to her, she's always had it. And it's obviously something that's been there many, many years in this timeline. Um, and just her medical history's changed, a bunch of stuff. So it's kind of freaky. So apparently she has this terrible nervous tick of going like this now that she can barely stop doing. Uh, and she didn't, she didn't have that before. So yeah, if you tell me that somebody had some weird thing and then it was gone, it was back, you know, I've seen it. So I've seen it. Not maybe not the same one, but I've seen it. But for me, Dark Wolf, I do not remember having him any seeing any weird things on him uh, when I'm in his videos and not when I met him in person for my timeline. At least not anything you really like no no weird hand things. I tend to kind of notice if people have weird positioning too. Strangely, I don't always notice if your a finger is short or something, but when the positioning is weird, I, I always notice that. If you move strangely, I always notice that. I'm like a I totally notice movement changes. So What is the freakiest about 1984 is the concept of that one language that structures and limits thoughts. Yeah, yeah, it, it seems to have more and more significance as we see the Emmy making little changes. Um, and I'm really starting to see more how certain um, terminologies are f flood the media, uh, flattening the curve, um, you know, stuff like that. In this timeline, there's a lot more videos on that and a lot more attention paid. Also, um, names are weird. There's just, you know, I ship for a living. So when you ship, you've got to um, see the name of the, the buyer and their, we use the name first and last and the, the, the location, city and state, or sometimes city and, and country. You know, it kind of just play it by ear when it's out of country. So we see those names and, and those locations for every package that we're shipping, which is, you know, 20, 30, 40 a day. Um, and for a long time, we would just kind of every now and then see a weird name and kind of joke. I mean, it's totally immature and puerile, I know, but we've got nothing better to do when we're doing this boring job. So, you know, it'd be like, hey, check out this last name. I'm glad I don't have it. Or... Uh, this name is really cool, or hey, this name is the same name as, you know, your daughter, or this is, um, and then, and, and the same thing with, with locations, you know, some cities just would have kind of a weird name, um, hey, I wonder how they got that name, some, a couple times I'd even, you know, I'm super curious person, so there's a few times I even googled the history of a city to see how they supposedly got their name, I'll tell you, the last year, there are so many names. I swear, I it's something I would have made it up. You know, like Schlammer Schmoogle, You know, Peter Dingledorgill, or you know, just it's ridiculous names. And the other thing is, I mean, for years I did this job, and I never heard of a new um, city, like large city or region in California. I knew all the California locations. Yes, there are a lot of them, but I may not always know exactly where they are, but I knew about where they were, and I at least heard of it. Uh, the last six months, there are so many new cities in California. I get it daily. Like, I've never heard of that city. I've never heard of that city. You think now, after six months, I would have heard them all, but there's, I swear there's a new city, and it's all the way up north, and I used to live up north. Oh, my God, there's so many weird. And then there's all these weird city names and a lot of them sound like european names it's like berlin tennessee and um like um there's one that's in california that is also in calif uh in canada that showed up about two years ago suddenly i have to be really careful because it's um it's um what is that one darn it the trouble is if I write the city name in CA, that could stand for California or Canada. Uh, that was not in Cal. We didn't have that in California. So um, there's just a bunch of weird stuff. Everything is just weird. Um, if you look at like 
famous people getting in the news. A lot of them have names that kind of sound like what's going on in their, the story that they're on the news for. Like Anthony Weiner showed his Weiner is like a, a perfect example. But there's just a lot of stuff um, like that in this timeline. Like it's like a, a cheap, corny movie where they name the characters after their role-playing job in, in the show. So... Just watch for that, because it's just weird. weird. Well, somebody complained I say weird too much. I refuse to stop saying weird. Now I just want to say it more. All right. Guess I could use other words, and they're not as nice as weird. All right, this one is from Bill White. Very good find. It's creepy, in case you don't like the word weird. But it's not spiders, it's not snakes, and it's not insects. Still creepy, though. <laughs> Super creepy. All right, so we covered, what, a few weeks ago? People don't remember the Australian Alps. They don't remember snow. Um, kangaroos in the snow. Um, <laughs> don't remember Australian Alps existing. So now we've got uh, creepy, my strangeness in the can in the Australian Alps. Let's see if this thing will load. Actually, my um, knock on wood, I'm doing pretty good with my computer. All right, so can Australia. Uh, but apparently they have both now in this timeline. And they have a big load of overpopulated horses in the Australian Alps. Uh, and then it snowed really hard and they were really hungry. I'm not going to play this whole video, but it's called Cannibal Horses in the Australian Alps. So this guy um, found this bunch of horses were just basically one horse died and all the other horses ate it. Of course, the storyline is they must have been really hungry. But so apparently they just stuck their little snozzles Smart. right in. And, long and long uh, long. Whoop, we don't want to play you. And he got it all on video. And there they are. This is the dead horse. Um, and these guys are all chomping. There was supposed to be like three of them total. Sticking their head in there. And they ate a whole bunch of this dead horse. Um... Sometimes you're glad when the videos don't show a close-up. It's kind of weird, the, the video, the way the snow is on the, on the head there. I keep looking at that going, there's a mistake right here. Um, I don't know, did the ME make this video and it was kind of sloppy? Or did, are there really cannibal horses in the current timeline? I don't know. But uh, supposedly, according to this video, there are. And I've already covered in the past uh, horses eating like birds, like chomping down birds and, and rats. Um, apparently, like, pigeons in this timeline can eat whole rabbits, like, yomp them down. Birds apparently have way bigger n neck areas, a lot of them now, because it used to be they wouldn't be able to stuff down a whole rabbit. Uh, like, they, they can eat something almost their same size. So I'm not really shocked to find that um, after they – announced the me announced in many many videos that horses eat baby rabbits and baby birds and rats and then they were feeding fish to horses um in siberia oh it's pretty good for them when it's cold so now we have cannibal horses which is creepy and gross but i can't say i'm surprised good find bill white uh excellent find all right that's the creepy, but this one is, to me, the weirdest. Um, have you ever heard of margarita dermatitis? Margarita as in the mixed drinks. Uh, margarita dermatitis. Have you ever heard of that? Um, also associated with lime, celery, fennel, lemon, grapefruit, figs, Hawaiian lays. Russian sage, um, have you ever heard of it? Because it is 
I actually saw this a couple weeks ago and I kept neglecting to get it on the show, which is kicking myself. Uh, but it's, it's good stuff and I have more time for it today, so it's probably worth it. I am a C-54 licensed contractor in California. I do a lot of fireplaces. I hope you're still getting work. They're still letting contractors work, but I, I can't imagine there's a lot of fireplaces going in unless you get a lot of repair work. I remember it spelled weird, not weird. That does look sort of familiar, but yet I want to say no for me. Um, so I can't. If, if it was W-I-E-R-D, it must have been a really long time ago. It, it does look a little familiar, but maybe, like for me, the McDonald's um, where the M-A-C went to M-C, that happened when I was a kid. I do remember being confused about that when I was a kid, but that was a long time ago, long time ago. Cool thing is that we had originally planned to simulcast it anyway. Are you talking about the uh, IMET conference? Yep. Well, it'll be less stressful to uh, make the video at home because you could just edit out any goofs and redo it. Kawasaki disease has just killed a child in Edinburgh. Yeah, there's a lot of weird disease stuff. Um, I, I think I've talked a little bit about Kawasaki disease in the past. Current timeline diseases are different. Never heard of, never heard of Corona California. Exactly. That's another one. That's another one. Um, Corona. Is that by LA? I think that might be an older one though. Corona. Corona, I think it's not a super new one. I think that one's been around for a while. That one, I kind of have a dual memory. Like, I kind of remember and I kind of don't. You know, I did. I used to say I don't have dual memories, but lately I'm starting to get that, which I don't like. Like, part of me says no, but then somebody else, another part of me is like, no, remember? I'm not sure if it's just two different me's or I'm getting the download. That kind of bugs me. But there's definitely a bunch way up north that I am sure weren't there when I was a kid. Like, I'm sure. Corona, California. I think that's near um, L.A. City of Corona. Norco. Yeah, I think that's near L.A. Long, oh, no, it's kind of a distance off. Let's see, wait, where's L.A.? There's Long Beach. So L.A. is way up there. No, that's Santa Barbara. Where's Los Angeles? Just zoom out there. Okay, there's Los Angeles. There's Corona. There's Sandy. Yeah, so it's kind of near L.A., Hmm. That's interesting. I really don't remember Long Beach being that close to Santa Monica. That's what was confusing me. Long Beach is like really close to LA. I remember it being over like over here more. That whole that whole coastline looks weird. I haven't really looked at that for a while. I don't remember this nub sticking way out over here. It was kind of like Santa Monica and then just along the coast was Long Beach, but I don't remember this nub being all big like that. That's interesting. Um, hmm. Yeah, okay. There's, there's definitely something a little bit different. It looks like that stuff, that area's kind of gotten squished, squished together a little bit. I haven't looked at that in a while. I, I don't remember that at all, though. 
What's going on down here? <laughs> SeaWorld's gotten... I'm going to have to come down back. You know, I used to take my dog here all the time to this beach, and it's been a long time since I've been there. I am actually really want to go look again, but on the, on the other hand, I'm kind of scared because according to this map, a lot has changed in there. A, a lot. Um, it's kind of like L.A., uh, Brian Stavely just went there, and he said the mountains have bulged up a lot. And in uh, L.A., it's been quite a while since I've been there. And, it, and it, I did hear that the mountains were bulging up a lot over there, like the Sierras, uh, so you could really see it. And that's something I'll probably really notice because, you know, residents, it, if you live there, it gets a little bigger each day and you get used to it. But if you leave and come back and it's like, yeah, uh, that might be another one where I'm going to kind of flip my gasket when I go down there so yeah these two um the beaches are I think <laughs> they, they've opened some of the beaches but the new rules <laughs> the new sea rules are so stupid and look at how big salt and sea is oh my god it's huge okay so the new sea rules for the beaches are that you can go to the beaches but you can't sit down or bring a towel you can go in the water, but no towels allowed. So I don't know what you're going to dry off with. I guess you just drip all the way back to the car. Uh, but no towels, uh, no coolers, and you can't sit down. I'm like, well, what happens if there's a huge, big bunch of space between you and the neighbor? Can you sit down? No, you can't sit down. So it's just a bunch of stupidness. Um, see how petty they can get. I mean, if you need a six-foot distance rule, then make a six-foot distance rule. But uh, let people sit down. If they're six foot distance, what does it matter? Just ugh. It's just like the new, the new level and petty bullcrap rules. It's like the whole world is like a homeowner's association with little nitpicky little stupid rules. So um, it's just like you thought you ate HOAs. HOAs stands for homeowner's association. So from you from other countries, if you don't know what a homeowner's association is, it's just some communities that are built and it's gotten more and more popular in like the last 10 or 20 years um they they um they build like they build a big bunch of homes and then they're they also install in in the they're like an association and they have all these ccnrs which are basically rules that you have to abide by that when you live if you move into this community and then they'll have like president and vice president and board members on the on the homeowners association. And um, when you move in, you ha you have to read this whole big book of rules and agree to abide by them. And then the homeowners association enforces those rules. Um, so sometimes you just get these little petty whiny uh, people on the on the board, and it just those seem it just seems to attract those kind of people. And it's basically people who get power hungry. And suddenly they have this modicrum, a modicrum of power, and they go around wielding it like um, the worst kind of petty police officer you've ever met in your life. Um, there's one weed in the crack in the corner, and they're writing you up a citation, and um, and they're just a bunch of petty baloney, and um, some of them won't let you paint. You know, they have this really strict rules about what color you can paint, um, uh, there's there's just so many stories of stupid HOA rules um, where, like, um, the the HOA will say you can have beige uh, coloration and then somebody will get in trouble and the HOA will say, no, that's tan, it's not beige. And um, uh, one person got in trouble for cutting their hedge without permission, but it was the city who had cut the hedge in order to get at the uh, water meter. And um, they kept saying you have to get your hedge back but they couldn't get the hedge back because the the water company kept cutting it and um and then the hoa refused to listen to reason and then you know just there's so many hoa stories well like all of california and a lot of these other states and are becoming like the hoa like a bunch of stupid petty rules that don't really make a lot of sense and are super irritating and nitpicky and uh then you get giant stupid fines if you break them um Ugh, I can't wait to get out of the homeowners association timeline. Uh, I guess I'm kind of ranty today, so I apologize. New Zealand has moved away again. It's way down under now. Let's just zoom out here. Um, 
New Zealand for me has been squeezing back towards Australia, actually. It was way down there. I think we're running out of ocean, so that's why. Oh, yeah, see, it's way closer. Um, for me, it was way down here. Originally, it was right here and smaller and one piece. And then when I learned of the ME, like almost four years ago, it was way out here. Uh, now it's, it's the last year it's been kind of scooting back up towards Australia for me. Uh, it's closer than it was, but it's bigger. It's a lot bigger. I, I think that it's just that like we're running out of ocean over here. The oceans are getting smaller. So I think that's the deal. Let me get any smaller. It doesn't want to get any smaller. All right, I'm going to give up on that. Okay, so margarita dermatitis. Have you heard of margarita dermatitis? Because you should have. Because it's really weird stuff and everybody should know about it. Uh, talk about New York. Um, yeah, I, I covered maybe a month ago. Then the whole New York uh, layout is just Freaky Friday to me. I don't even reckon the whole state. I don't recognize it. Can we try to convince the elite that they can breathe water? I am waiting to see if we get that. If we'll be able to breathe water because I think that would be so cool, and um, that might come into the timeline. I think we should be able to breathe water. I really want to be able to breathe water. I just think that would be the coolest thing ever. I don't exactly see why we couldn't um, have lungs adapted to just suck in enough air to be fine. Um, I think it's doable. There's a bunch of other... I mean, if, like, hawks can carry baby goats, then we should be able to suck in enough water. We've got... There's all kinds of... There's, like, creatures that breathe through their butt. So, um... There should be no problem now breathing water. I know you were trying to say kill all the, the elites, but you know what? I think that would be cool. That's like one of my favorites. Essential workers, what a just, yeah. And, and every state's got a different essential workers. Like our state still allows new construction. I don't see how that's really all that essential. But on, on the flip side, I think the whole, you know, I kind of was all right with it at first, but then the more I learned about it, the more it drags on, the more I'm really just like, this is dumb. But, you know, again, I don't know if um, there's really another reason, like an, a Mandela reason, a spiritual reason, a timeline reason for this, then it would make more sense. Um, just a massive disruption in uh, what a lot of people do for a living, um, how they do it, um, people being forced to kind of not do their favorite distractions, some of their favorite distractions. There's a lot of things going on um, if the real reason it has very little to do with the sea, um, you know, I guess the other fear porn is that it's a deep state takeover and, and all that. And um, that may be what's one of the storylines that's going to float on the top. But um, I think there's probably a lot more to it down, down deep, which is why I try not to get too irritated with it. So you think it moved further south. That's interesting. We might be crossing timelines because um, my timeline lately, it's becoming further north. New Zealand is moving north um, back towards my original location way back. Channel is Marty Blagborag. Now there's an example of new timeline names. Poas are no ways I do my own thing. Yeah, you know, I didn't realize how bad they were until I started doing contractor work long ago, and I heard so many stories 
and there were so many problems just trying to get a house painted, um, you know, and, and some of them would would micromanage your color selection, and there was all this like, um, I don't know, passive aggressive baloney with any little thing you wanted to do, and then if, if they were your friends, like they liked you, they would let more stuff, you know, let you do more, and then somebody else they didn't like, they wouldn't let them do anything, and it became this whole political baloney, uh, yeah, hoas. You know, and sometimes they're fine when you move in, but you don't know five years ago who's going who's gonna to take over the HOA and be the new president and what little weird clique of petty micromanagers are going to get a hold of it. So I've just seen too much. Okay, so Margarita Dermatitis. I can get to it. This is so weird. All right, so... All right, so apparently, and this is, it, it is actually kind of gross and scary, but I can't see how anybody on the planet would not know about photodermatitis. Um, photodermatitis. So basically, there's a whole bunch of things that if you spill them on your skin and then go in the sun, you will get what is basically like hideous, horrible third degree burns and it's called photo uh, phytophotodermatitis phytophotodermatitis um and one of these things is um lime i mean a lot of these are really common things so here's the thing with phytophotodermatologist dermatitis so say you spill some lime like you're outside making a margarita which has to happen millions of times all over the country uh, and you spill some lime on your hand. So then everything feels fine. You probably are busy, so you don't run and wipe up every molecule of the lime. You don't go screaming, oh my God, lime, touch my hand. I'm going to die. No, you're busy at the party. Uh, maybe you'll get around to half wiping it. Maybe you won't. Maybe you'll just, you know, continue on with your life. There's only a few drops on the back of your hand you don't even notice. Okay, so phytophotodermatitis, I swear this was not in my old timeline. The, somehow the light from the sun, like the UV rays, interact with the substance like lime and a whole bunch of other common items, and it makes like a poison that then causes the burn in your hand but you don't notice it for 12 like 24 hours so you're bopping along all day in the sun meanwhile you're now dead meat because tomorrow or the next day you will have these like third degree burns everywhere that that lime touched so that means that if a kid goes out and eats a lemon outdoors and I am telling you that almost every child I ever grew up with did this. Um, well, at least half of them. I actually hate limes, so no, I didn't do it. But I mean, like a bunch of my friends would eat limes outside in the sun. And they would just, you know, when you're a kid, you just grab a lime off the tree and you just eat it and you spill juice all over your face and you kind of half wipe it and you go on with your life. Nothing ever happened. But in this timeline, if you do that, you can have some really bad consequences. Uh, and it is gross. And so like all of these pustules and everything, this is all from just spilling like lime juice on your hand in the sun. And then if you eat it, you'll get these pustules and third degree burns all over like your lips and everywhere it dribbles down. So if you're like yomping on a lime, uh, outside um there was i'm not going to look for it but i mean like so this guy spilled margarita all down his front and then got all these third degree burns um that don't show up till tomorrow so if, see if it hurt right away you'd run and wash it off but no and uh it often causes this discoloration that can last for years after it heals so that's even a regular burn uh, won't at least in me does not make that level of um, skin color change at least it never has I mean I'm actually pretty darn sloppy about grabbing stuff in and out of the oven and I probably burn like a, a corner of a knuckle about once a month um, checking in the oven and not being careful 
and I don't have any discoloration on my hand. Of course, I've never had giant monster pustules of third degree burn either, but I did actually get a horrible burn on this arm once when I was a kid and it did not discolor. So um, stuff that causes this photophytodermatologist, uh, dermatitis, I can't say the word right, lime, celery, fennel, parsley, lemon, grapefruit, some Hawaiian lays will do it. So, so they give you a lay. This makes no sense to me. You go to Hawaii and they give you the, the you know, the flower um, necklaces. They're called lays. Some of the flowers they use supposedly could cause phytophotodermatitis. Now, why on, on any planet or reality would they have a tradition of putting a flower around your neck in one of the sunniest, hottest places in the world that will cause third degree burns and any place touches the skin when most people hardly have any clothes on when they're in the freaking heat. There is no freaking way that they would have be putting those lays on people uh, and people and still be doing it. And I mean, that's like ridiculous. Like it's another shark jump. So figs cause this figs. There's no way figs cause this because not in my old timeline because we had a fig tree and anybody who has a fig tree that's old knows how many freaking figs come off those trees. Um, and I was a kid, I would probably eat like two figs a day and I was out outside all the time because you know parents are like, go outside and quit bothering me. And I would eat those figs and I never washed my hands. There was no water outside. I was too lazy. Who cares? You're a kid. You don't care if you're dirty. Uh, I never once got photophytodermatitis, and you can you can bet your butt that I would not be eating figs outside in the summer, all all fig season, which is any hot time of the year. Um, there I would have had like five thousand photo phytophotodermatitises as a child if this was the thing. I mean, there's no freaking way. Uh, other things that cause it: hogweed, parsnips, Queen Anne's lace, Russian sage. And here's another one, bergamot or bergamot. I don't know how to say it exactly, but it's an ingredient in perfumes. Okay, how could you not, how could you have an ingredient in perfumes? You put perfumes, like a lot of women put it, you know, here or here. And then if you go into the sun with that on, you're going to get third degree burns. How would they have an ingredient in a perfume? And then they're going to say, oh, but never go in the sun with this stuff. I mean, there's no way, there's no way. Pigment, um, no, it's, okay, so I'm gonna look up this stuff some more, but this is like total ridiculous baloney. The photosensitizing substances found in phototoxic plants belong to a class of chemical count compounds called furanocoumarins, which are activated by long wavelength UVA. The most toxic of these organic compounds are the linear furanocoumarins, so-called since they exhibit a linear chemical structure. Blah, 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 fumacoumarins are invariably found in plants with photophytodermatitis symptoms. A reaction typically begins within 24 hours of exposure and peaks at 48 to 72 hours of after exposure. Initially, the skin turns red and starts to itch and burn. Large blisters form within 48 hours. The blisters may leave black, brown, or purplish scars that can last for several years. This hyperpigmentation of the skin is caused by the production of melanin triggered by the furanocoumarins. I've not really heard of um, melanin being triggered by like anything in particular. Not, I've never heard of that. So that's kind of a different thing. Um, although media reports have suggested that eye exposure to the agent can lead to temporary or permanent blindness, the risk of permanent blindness is not supported by existing research. So temporary blindness. Yeah. Photophytodermatitis can affect people of any age. Um, four plant families, the carrot family, the citrus family, the mulberry family, and the lejeune family. The carrot family is the main family. 
false bishop suite. I don't know what some of these are, but um, celery, parsnip, parsley have been reported to cause it. Agricultural workers, grocery workers, occupational food handlers. Persian hogweeds. Okay, I don't know some of these, but... Wild carrot. Then the citrus family is the second most widely distributed family of plants associated with phytophotodermatitis. Numerous citrus fruits exhibit phototoxic effects. The best known is lime. That's why they call it margarita dermatitis because uh, the lime is in the margarita. The most severe reactions are caused by the essential oil of the bergamot, bergamot orange. I've never heard of orange oil having any danger out in the sun um, lime oil. I mean, a lot of people get, um, essential orange essential oils for, um, like just, you could buy that when you're making your own cosmetics or, um, I've never heard of there being any danger having this on you during the sunlight hours. It, it's just creepy. The common fig is well known and thoroughly documented phototoxic effects. Yeah, and that's what we had, the common fig. Hmm. So you have to... Um, Avoid contact with any of that stuff. If you have to wash it off really good, if you're going to go out in the sun. Do not incinerate any of these plants since this will serve to disperse the phototoxic substances more widely. Never heard of that. Everybody burns everything around here in a big pile. Although that's getting less popular in recent years, but... I mean, people cut limes, oranges all the time. I'm like the orangeaholic. I eat oranges all the time. I should have like millions and millions of burns. Um, if you can't find protective clothing, apply sunscreen. It'll help a little. After any outdoor activity, take a shower or bath as soon as possible. A second line of defense is to avoid sunlight. So they don't really have a good treatment. Um, bleaching cream for the hyperpigmentation and just kind of, you know, put the usual stuff on like any burn. The photosensitizing effects of plants have been known since antiquity. The juice of ame magis was rubbed on patches of vitiligo, after which patients were encouraged to lay in the sun. Now, see, vitiligo is a, a big old Emmy for me, too. So I don't know, this whole thing. Berloch dermatitis. Um, see, here, now, this, this one is from um, use of eau de cologne, a perfume herbs infused with bergamot oil. You would think that they'd figure out pretty quick if anything in a cologne caused violent third degree burns if you went out in the sun and they would stop putting it in there i mean how dumb can people be this is just weird so anyway there's my rant for this dumbness of this timeline it's just like <laughs> just no just no Well, now we've always had this white sun with higher UV. But, you know, I mean, like, my old son had UV, and you didn't get even slight, tiny, witty, bitty burns from lime or bergamot or anything. It just This is, should be a huge thing. There's a whole bunch of plants that uh, lime, lemon, grapefruit, these things are pe things people eat outdoors. I mean, I have definitely, my mom would eat grapefruit outside all the time because she loves it, and we have a grapefruit tree. 
Um, I eat oranges outside all the time. Uh, I, a lot of my friends ate la- lime outside all the time. And then we go about our business. There's not a sink nearby. We don't run and wash off every drop. Uh, um, you know, there's definitely going to be juice around the lips. Well, in this timeline, if you leave that juice around the lips, um, you will have this, it, it's extra gross when your lips are burned, you know, because it looks like you have some kind of hideous disease. I mean, we're kind of lucky that those photos didn't show up on that random search I just did because some of the ones I saw were just gross. You look like you have some kind of horrible, you would not go out in public. You will want to wear a mask. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is the one time where you'll be glad you have an excuse to wear a mask over your face is if you get this um, this margarita dermatitis on your lips. So people, um, this is like a public safety thing. Do not um, consume any of these things outdoors without like super washing it immediately because this is nasty. <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't gotten it yet, and I don't know anybody does, and I'm hoping we'll get out of the timeline where it exists, but um, it looks horrible. Now the sun is becoming dangerous. That's why our Emmy instinct tells us to become nocturnal beings. I don't know. I, 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 I kind of hope that goes away because I'm not really liking it. They used carrot oil and even almond oil for tanning. Yeah, I don't think almond oil's on the list, but uh, carrot oil definitely is. You would not want to use that for can't tanning and get third degree burns. I remember black opium essential oil. Hmm, no, I have not heard of that one. I can't say I'm a, like an essential oil expert of the universe, though, so. That's one thing I love about the lockdown. I sleep when I want and I get up when I want. As long as you're still getting paid. Unfortunately, I just have to work double time and I have to work night and day. I mean, I I really am not complaining. I'm kind of complaining, but I'm not because, um, you know, it could be far worse, but. What have bartenders done for ages? Constantly touching citrus for drinks. Yeah, and limes. I mean, anybody who's ever had a party should know about this because somebody at the party would have gotten, you know, lime burns. I mean, it's just, it's craziness. All the times for kids, I would, there should have been so many burns. Uh, I don't know. Anyways, that's it. I think I got everything. Let me check about you. So yeah, not a lot of them, but they're weird. You got my coronavirus rant in. I think it's just a rant on illogic. It's, it's making me, I don't know, maybe I just have to get used to things making no sense. Maybe that's, my, that's one of the things I've just got to learn to deal with. Luckily, our bosses have decided to pay us full check for the entire lockdown. Score! Total score. Um, if they have the money, great. Whoops, I was in the wrong chat. <laughs> Did anybody notice? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> People just talk about whatever in any chat anyway. Try new hell water cologne. It will make the ladies burn on you. So yeah, bergamot is used in in perfumes and cologne. So uh, it's an equal opportunity burner. Anything with... Essential is flammable. Cinnamon is not an exemption. Yeah, flammable, but it shouldn't just like burn you when it's not on fire. Maybe this is just for those who stayed in all winter before going out. No, because it makes like a a poison. The oil interacts with the light and makes like a poison. 
So it's like throwing a poison on your skin. So it's not, the sun is not doing it directly. It is inner, it's making like this, this poison that furrow cans or whatever I said it was. Uh, so yeah, no, uh, tanned people will get it just as bad. There's tanning is no protection. Um, you can either get the substance off of your skin or you can keep the sun from touching your skin. Those are your only two options to get away from it. It's not like a sunburn at all. It's like a um, chemical burn. It's a chemical burn. So the, the, the light changes it into a toxic burning chemical. All right, anyways, that's about it. I do remember where the end stream button is. Dumb! It's a miracle. I have learned one thing. Ooh, I've got $27 in chat. That means I totally missed somebody, and I totally apologize. Derp. Futuristic, $10. Thank you. Um, there was one earlier one I saw. Let's see, what did Futuristic say? Oh, yeah, you never say anything. You just give the 10 bucks. Cool. Derp, 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 derp. Let me see if this tells me anything about it. Because, you know, that would be really useful if the chat revenue button let me learn about the chat revenue. But that might be too much to ask. It is not clickable. Did it change? Did somebody give me a dollar? Nerp. Corona with lime. Yes, there's a double danger now. <laughs> That is funny, isn't it? You're right. And there's so many commercials about Corona with Lyme. The Corona is dangerous and the Lyme is dangerous. Um, and remember that COVID causes COVID toes and Lyme causes COVID toes and um, frostbite causes COVID toes or COVID toes cause frostbite. I think I've been awake too long. Lipidics. I don't know who gave me the other seven bucks, but thank you very much for it. Um, maybe one of these days I'll learn how to use this thing. Stream now classic. Manage. Nope. Okay. Anyways, thank you all for coming. It's been a pleasure. Uh, I appreciate everybody listening to my rant. I had a good time. And uh, thanks for coming. Think good thoughts, everyone. This is Eva signing off for Once Upon a Timeline.